Welcome to the Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. What a humdinger of a show! Chappy Chappy! Beep Beep! <laughs> booty O's! They make sure you ain't booty! I got the gift again and the gift of Jack, and I'll put that lazy eye right back to work. I'm not a bad guy. I'm not a good guy. I'm the guy. Hello everyone and welcome to the Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast, the wrestling podcast where we review Raw and Smackdown and give all of you beautiful people the wrestling news of the week. My name, of course, giving you that lovely song. We'll now be chop topping the charts under the under the, uh, the 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 song name, if you will. You know, my you know because you know. Lady Gaga isn't Lady Gaga's real name. My name is Turbo Tony. That's the name I'll go by, you know. Um, the difference is, is that my name is actually Tony. So we do a little bit of play out there. So my uh, mixtape will be dropping this week. And it sure will be, as the kids say, lit. I don't know what that means, but I'm guessing it's good. Uh, I do not do the show on my own. I do it with a friend of mine who actually was in the news this week. The shrewd devil. It's uh, the fact is that uh, Brad Pitt didn't cheat on Angelina with a woman. He cheated on her with a man. And his name is Matt Marsander. Uh-huh. Yeah. You uh-huh. love that Pitt dink, man. Oh, yes. No. Oh, yes. You're like Winston Churchill with it. Oh, yes. You love it. No. No, no. 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 <laughs> oh, Yes. <laughs> oh no <laughs> how you doing anyway matt uh yeah not too bad this has been a fairly average week i suppose mm-hmm. nothing really we- worth um exchange ex- ex- out about yeah i mean will you will you be buying my mixtape when i release it uh i would expect a free copy well i'm stingy i need that money man i, so no. Fuck. No, 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 I won't be listening no free- to it <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing else could, could make you uh, even get close to something involving me singing. I don't blame you on that front. I would have to say. <laughs> I don't blame you. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, it's been uh, it's been a an interesting week. Uh, when I say an interesting week, it's been interesting due to the fact that it hasn't been very interesting. And, let, and we'll go into that as we go along. Um, if you've been following our Facebook page you would notice that me i'm just getting gradually more cynical it seems as the weeks go on um so i'm trying to keep myself upbeat for this episode and you know not exactly be too uh do downtrodden or anything like that because here we like to have fun even if the wrestling that we've watched isn't particularly fun so we'll go into that of course if you'd like to interact with us on said facebook page do you like that uh like that little well played in there? yeah yeah, uh, facebook.com slash let's talk wrestling podcast now there is a twitter handle and this particular twitter handle is famous because it was the twitter handle that gave inspiration to the beatles first album and that twitter handle is at talk wrestle pod you could yeah that that famous song talk that's it pod is one of the most famous songs you know it's uh it's out there and that is our twitter handle uh you know pushing aside the fact that twitter wasn't around uh you know, or the internet for one, when that first album came out. But um, anyway, yeah. moving on, <laughs> you can also send us any private questions or, or, or audio um, audio questions and private messages. Sorry, to let's talk wrestling podcast at gmail dot com. There is plenty of ways to get in contact with us. Uh, and like I said, we've got some stuff to talk about. Clash of Champions is tonight. Uh, we will be doing our predictions on that. Uh, we've got plenty of fan feedback from you guys. Some really good, interesting questions. Uh, you guys seem to be asking us questions that get to the core of like our wrestling experiences, or to doing that personal stories uh, segment we did. I fucking love it. Keep keep bringing it in. It's good to me. I love it. Um, but before we get into that this week, let's do a little bit of procrastination. Um. Matt, you know, last week I said that I'd been playing Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah. And I had been trying to get every single card in the game because it's a card game within the game, right? Um, I'm basically 100%ing all the old Final Fantasies. As a kid, I was I didn't know enough about the game to do, right? Uh, Matt, I've been losing my fucking mind. <laughs> yeah. 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 Giving up on it. <laughs> so, like, like, no, I'm still doing it, right? I haven't given up quite yet, right? So 
I started going crazy where I couldn't like like basically there's different rules of the game right and if you start muddying them up you have to like lose a card to a specific person who makes a card over at the specific part of the map it, it gets crazy last night when I was playing it there's a part there's a part of the story where you can only win a card from a sp- specific character at this point in the game and you have to beat her um I played her for two hours last night without winning a single game. Mm. Uh, so I was gradually losing my mind. I was, and you know what's funny, Matt? Normally when I'm grinding out games like this, I'll put a podcast, you know, much like ours, in the background. The problem is there's no in-game fucking music slider. So if I were to put a podcast on, I've got to listen to the very loud Final Fantasy VIII theme song and theme track in the background, which ain't going to work. It's just not going to work. So, yeah, I've, uh, I, I've been losing my mind. Um, so, yeah, there is that. I can imagine. Yeah. I don't recommend it. Really, I don't. So, there we are. Uh, any procrastination for you, Matt? No. No, no, no. I am, a, I am not a creature of procrastination, it would seem. <laughs> You're all business. That's what you are. Get them I will, go. I will say one thing. I have to say, people, next week... You're either going to get a very happy Tony on this podcast or a very pissed off one. And it has nothing to do with wrestling this time. I'm getting my pain injection on Monday for my leg. And people know here that I have fucking problems with my leg, lots of pain. Um, nerve damage. Oh, it's just that's not even the beginning of it. It's fucking, <laughs> that, that's just a mess now. Okay, I don't want to right, just flat out wrecked then. Just destroyed. Yeah, I've I've given up trying to understand it at this point. So I'm getting a, an X-ray injection where they're going to pump loads of fucking steroids into my wound, which will. Yeah, right. That's like that's like it, the start of the week. Yeah. Well, the thing is, though, is that it doesn't kick in for like a week. So maybe it kicks in a little bit earlier and I'm feeling a bit better. Or I'm like, this thing needs to fucking kick in by now and I'll get really cranky. So that's what I'm saying. You know, right there. But, well, uh, if it gets that bad, you'll always have Clash of Champions to, <laughs> to, to keep, you, keep you sated. Uh, uh, Excited for it, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> Can you feel the apathy, Matt? It's uh, it's oozing out of me. Oh, right I've now. spoken to you this week. I know how you stand. <laughs> oh, Raw has broken me down. I am a broken, defeated man, shall we say? But um, but still. All right then, Matt. We might as well get into the wrestling news and uh, talk a little bit about it here. Um, so. TNA Bound for Glory is coming up. I'm not watching it. I don't watch TNA. And I think we've made that status pretty clear here. Yeah, we've talked a lot of shit about TNA, let's be honest. Yeah. Um, But it could be argued, and I would agree with this, that the hottest thing in TNA at the moment is Matt Hardy. Um, He's the only one getting any sort of interest from outside of TNA's usual circles, which dwindle almost every single week, right? Yeah. So he's quite important to them now. It seems like WWE is taking notice because we heard the rumors this week that they're sending out feelers to Matt Hardy to try and bring him back. Apparently, the broken High Lord himself has his contract up in spring, and WWE wants a piece of his broken ass pie. So, um, yeah, what, what do you think about this, Matt? It, oh, I don't like it. You don't like it. You would much. What, what would no. you want Hardy to do when his contract uh, comes up? carry on just being broken hardy elsewhere oh so just any is it anywhere apart from tna would you rather him stay in tna i'd reckon he stay i reckon he should stay in tna i just don't think i just don't want him in wwe it's one of those things that i know i know that you're kind of off the broken character you don't quite enjoy it as much as other people i don't quite enjoy it but i think it just wouldn't work in wwe now no yeah uh, that's the first unless thing I come, thought. Unless he comes along and just sort of like feuds with Wyatt or something. No, that's even then. Kind of uh, like they, I, to me, I, I'm still gutted that they can't write Wyatt as well as they can. So, Very true. Um, I think that WWE would be that one company that would take this and try and make it their own. And the minute you try and make whatever this is with Matt Hardy something else, that's when it stops working. Uh, that's when the allure starts going off. That's when it starts to uh, become what Zack Ryder had when he had his own show fucking 
fiddled around with WWE, and all they did was just move it onto their own YouTube channel. That's that's all they had to do. That that shit died. Um, to me, I I think that Matt should stay where he is for now. TNA, obviously, they give him the funding. Uh, they they they're the ones that supply the cameras. They're the ones that supply the extra talent. If they if you know, in this case, decay. Um, and they don't seem to want to involve themselves in the creative process of this. They're kind of letting him go with it, and where he goes with it, fair play. He's up to him. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's one of those things that I should. I, I reckon he should stick with TNA for as long as they go. If TNA folds, which I don't expect them to do, they have survived for a long time. Um, not the same as thriving people, but they have survived. Um, if they were to fold, let's say he signs a, a two-year, three-year contract and they fold within that time, then he could just take this whole deal onto his own internet series. I'm sure he could get sponsors for it. I'm sure he could bring in indie wrestlers for a day of filming. I'm sure they wouldn't mind it. It gives eyes on them sort of thing. And mm-hmm. um, Yeah, that's, 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 how I, that's how I look into it anyway. Um, you know, I'm sure there'll be plenty of people that'd be more than happy to watch. I'm sure more people watched Final Deletion, both Final Deletions, um, over the net rather than watching TNA for it. I'm absolutely oh, yeah, sure. I, I YouTubed it. Yeah. So, you know, in which case, may as well put it up on YouTube channel, get some fucking ad revenue for it. I'm not saying you'll get millions out of it, but, you know, it's something that he could keep on doing, you know, and, and go from there. So, if he's tempted to go back, I would just look at... I, I, I would be wear, wary if I was in his shoes. It's a recipe for disaster if he goes back there and they try and play around with his character and they start giving him, they start getting writers who write out promos for him. That's just not going to work. They're not going to... Un- yeah. If there's, if there's only one person, Matt, on this earth that understands the Broken Matt character and that's Matt Hardy himself. There's yeah. no one else to understand what the fuck's going on. So if if WWE writers start trying to get their fucking grubby mitts all over it, that's just gonna that's gonna go bad quickly. But uh, but still, um, yeah. So one thing I knew, Matt, going into the next news story here, which I was very shocked to see, but I don't <clears throat> I don't blame whoever wrote this for doing it because it's the truth. But ESPN, we know, are quite buddy buddy with WWE recently, Matt. We're seeing yeah. lots of. WWE guys showing up on their shows and we're seeing um, WWE uh, plug the sports center loads with WWE talent going on there. Like let's just say they're on a very good relationship with one another. Let's yes. just say that um, enough so that uh, Mick Foley can have a little bit of a, uh, a hissy fit over this random dude moaning about Kevin Owens winning the championship and ESPN were willing to slap his hand over it. Right. So it's interesting then that whoever reviews Raw on a weekly basis just outright blasted this week's Raw. This is ESPN. I can't (laughs) make a statement because I don't know what Raw was like this week was like. There you are. But you know know it's going to be a bore when WWE's own business partner uh, blasts the show, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the way it is. Uh, the review held back nothing. It was brutal in its outlook of 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 the show. Just basically saying that they were completely devoid of creativity. That's basically their line right there. They're right, of course. I thought this week and last week were fucking horrendous, but um, still, it's um, it's interesting that you'd get ESPN of all people being the uh, the guys to point the finger, but. Um, Interesting, none the least. But uh, I'm. I wonder if anyone got a a, um, a little bit of a slap on the wrist, just a little bit less public than that other prick who uh, ran his mouth a little bit. So, but interesting there. You don't hear ESPN blasting SmackDown for their lack of creativity. No, you do not. And you you've got a big ass smile right now, do you, mate? Like, I do. You know? I do. <laughs> oh God, I hate you a little bit. I have to admit. Yeah, I do. But still. <laughs> Uh, Ryback, Matt. Let's talk a little bit about Ryback. We we haven't spoken about him a lot since he left, and he's been quite outspoken since him leaving WWE. He changed his, uh, his name this week, so he's no longer Ryan Reeves. He's Ryback he Reeves. Legally Ryback, yeah. So he can use his name, and WWE can't do shit. Um, he did an Ultimate Warrior on it, in that yeah. sense. right? 
Um, and that's completely fine if he wants to do that. I don't have any problem with that. I mean, even Steve Austin changed his name from Steve Williams to actually being Steve Austin. So yeah. Um, so a lot of wrestlers have done it. This wouldn't be the first, and I doubt it would be the last either. Um, so it's one of those things here where um, I wanted I wanted to use this as on a, as an excuse to speak a little bit about Ryback and what he's been saying over the last couple of weeks because we, it's kind of gone under the radar and we haven't spoken about it a lot. Have you seen anything of what he's been saying? Because I think he's got his own show I can't now. Say I have no. I can't well, say I've everything... actively got out of my way to check it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I haven't either, but. Um, I've seen transcripts and I've uh, heard from um, reputable people what has been said. So I'll go by that. Um, so essentially what, what's funny, what, what I think is quite funny with this is that he's, what he's essentially saying and a lot of the stuff he's venting about the company seems to be a lot of the same things that we were wondering around about with his career as it was transpiring. Uh, why did he lose 13 pay-per-view matches in a row? Why did he lose to Mark Henry by just having Mark Henry fall on him? Yeah, by um, just having uh, Henry heavy. Yeah. Uh, and then Mark Henry went back to doing fuck all after that. Um, talking about, you know, a whole host of other issues that a lot of people would would, um, would throw right back. You know, like him wanting to be, um, you know, the whole Intercontinental Champion, him being face, him being healed, you know, the ter- just basically going on the course of his career. And a lot of things that fans were aggrieved at at that time, it, it's clear that he shared the same ag- agreements. Same issues. You know, yeah. the same issues. Um, I think this is very apt. And the reason why I want to bring this up is because a lot of the times when you get talent, let's say like Sasha Banks now, who will fire back at fans for talking about why aren't you on TV why aren't you, what's going on with you? Why are you being booked this way? Or yeah, yeah. other wrestlers who do that. And because they're under contract, they have to fire back. And because they're currently in their run, or even if the fact that they just think that they're going get to out, get out the other side and everything's going to be better in the long term, it's, guy, it's, it's when you get guys that leave the company, like Ryback, and he's hardly the first person that comes out and says, actually, yeah, like looking back on it now, that was a fucking dumb, a stupid mistake. And I'm annoyed at it. Yeah, you know, um, so it's one of those things that I want to use it as a, as a. I don't blame Ryback for not coming out and saying this while his contract was still in in place because he's got a job and he has to put food on his plate and you know his loved ones' plates and stuff like this, right? Um, it's one of those things though that whenever you hear someone that's under contract in WWE talking about anything, and I mean anything, you need to take it with a pinch of salt. Yeah, that's just the bottom line of it. Uh, because it may not be how that person feels. Um, but I would urge anyone to go and have a look at what he said because it's clear that he just has, he just feels that he could have been a good top star. I mean, he was talking about him, you know, beating John Cena in merchandise sales, but then WWE making sure that they front loaded. Uh, for according to him, he was. I, I don't know whether or not that's true, but I'll go by his words. Well, the only person who, like the at one point vote they vocally that wwe vocally stated mm. was punk yeah yeah but, i, I mean, don't think ryback's been as popular as punk yeah I, he was uh, selling quite a bit of merch at one time i also I, I don't know if he beat john cena but one thing i will agree I mean, with I him do on, have a, i do have a ryback t-shirt though so. yeah yeah um so, but the one thing I will agree with Ryback on, and it's something that I said when we went to Raw, is how they front load all of their merch with John Cena shit. All, mm. all of their stuff on their merch stand was a good 80% John Cena, to the point I was shocked. So I ended up having to get a Finn Balor t-shirt that was too small for me. Uh, and I was shocked that he was selling them, considering he didn't make his debut on that show, which everyone thought he was going yeah. to. Yeah, it's like, uh, well, I, got a, I had to get a Reigns t-shirt that was too small. Yeah. Um, so the other sides are uh, doing Cena. It's like, mm, fuck yourself. Yeah. It's, uh, I guarantee you, most of their fans don't want a John Cena st- uh, shirt walking up into that merch booth. But it's because they front load it. 80% of their merch at those booths are John Cena. That's why he sells the most. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm under no, no assumption there. I remember going there, Matt, maybe because it's England, so it's a little bit biased. I saw fucking tons of people with Paige shirts. I'm sure if they had just as many Paige shirts as they had John Cena, Paige would have outsold John Cena on that event. But it's, it's hard to do that when you go and you ask these people at these merch stands, oh, what have you got? We've got John Cena. 
well, I don't want John Cena. Well, we've got this in XXXS or XXXSXL or, you know, in these really weird, it's like we've got John Cena up to the fucking wazoo. But That's it. We've got all, like, in the range of just complete unnatural sizes. Yeah. That's all we've got. It's like, yeah. oh. I'm sure they're doing for the everyone thing else. Now. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're doing the same thing now with Roman Reigns, trying to get his merch out there. So they're fucking front-loading it. But everyone's so against the guy now that they... I know you have one, Matt, but because you didn't get much of a, cho- a choice, it was either yeah. that or John Cena, <laughs> you know, which you chose uh, Roman Reigns at the time. Uh, almost as a fuck you to the guy. I remember <laughs> the look on your face when he said, we have John Cena shirts. You basically told him to fuck right off. That, was, yeah. that actually makes me laugh. But um, yeah, so I, I can agree with, with Ryback on that sense that, yeah, it must be hard for these guys to um, fire back at a lot of these things when you've got Vince and Mark Carano and guys like that going, well, this guy sells the most merch. It's like because you fucking front load all of it. You make it so it goes that way. You know, you're controlling all of the gears. Yeah, that's it. It's just so, like rigging the market in your favor, really. It's like, yeah. we sold so much because that was the only thing available. Yeah. It's like a shoe like, store saying, a... you, know, you know, like, was it like a shoe store saying, oh, fantastic. We, we, we sold loads more shoes than we did fucking yogurt. It's like, what? Well, yeah. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah. your place didn't sell yogurt. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. That's, that's beside the point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. You know what I mean? But. Uh, still, there we are. But uh, that's the way it works, and I doubt they're going to change it. I'm sure they still fucking... It's, any SmackDown show, man, I'm sure they're fucking front-loading that John Cena merch like a bitch. I'm absolutely sure. Especially with Reigns not on that brand anymore. They must be... Oh, God. I'd hate to go to what a SmackDown. Or maybe Styles, yeah. But, I mean, he's a heel, isn't he? And um, still, Are you still doing merch, though? It's not, yeah. like, it's not like he's doing a Jericho. Even then, no. Jericho's given up on that as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's, that's the reason why, you know, a lot of people were scoffing at Ryback when he left because he was talking about how the losers and people that lose a lot of matches as jobber guys and trying to get these guys over don't get paid according to the guys that they want to make stars. You know, that whoever's better in the ring doesn't get paid accordingly. Uh, and a lot of people scoffed at him. And I said, look, I can understand why some people are looking at him and going, we well, need to understand the lay of the land. But it's also naive to think that he doesn't, if you wade through what he's saying, that there isn't some sort of point there. And it's coming from a guy who at one point looked like he was on the track to become a, a top guy in that company yeah. and make shed loads of fucking cash. I'm sure he made a good amount anyway, but I mean, shed loads of money. Uh, you, you only have to look at the... Um, the list of the top most paid guys in that company to so understand if, if, if WWE looks at you as a top guy, you're going to get paid like that. It doesn't have anything to do with how good you are. You know, that's just the bottom line of it here. So interesting. Nonetheless, I wasn't expected to go into it that much actually, but nah. still uh, interesting on that front. Uh, is there any other news that you'd like to go over there, Matt? Um, no. I know before we we were, t- we were talking, I was like, Sonny's been arrested, but let's, there's no real shock. Yeah. Uh, I, the whole thing about news is that it's got the word new in it. So I'd like for it to be, you know, yeah. new, new things. Sit. Sonny's in trouble with the law again. Yeah. I mean, that's just an inevitability at this point. So uh, there we are. Uh, maybe she'll see some sunny days in the future. <laughs> Not like, like Shawn Michaels insinuated, but uh, sunny days nonetheless. Uh, fan feedback then let's go into some of the questions that were left by our fans this week thank you very much for doing so guys Billy McGee asks if we think that Kevin Owens will have his reputation ruined if uh, not like uh, Gallows and Anderson are ruined that's my new thing for them by the way Dead ruined if they <laughs> uh, if, if, if his reputation will be ruined if he loses that class of champions and what do you think will be uh, do you, what do you think is the most entertaining of both shows currently his is Jericho or Rollins on Raw, Styles or American Alpha on SmackDown. So let's, let's answer the Kevin Owens things first. I guess maybe I should answer this as this is a Raw question uh, for a Raw guy. No, I don't think he'll. Uh, I don't think he'll lose his reputation at all. I think that he'll be he's fine. Against, he's against Reigns, isn't he? No, he's against Rollins. Oh, he's against Rollins. Ro- Rollins, Rollins is a face now. So, um, so it's one of those things that. It's going to be a fuck finish anyway. Yeah, he's not losing the title. Uh, that's my opinion. But it's one of those things that, like, 
this won't be the first time that he holds a world championship. So even if he were, were to lose and Rollins gets his title back um, or wins the title for the first time in this sense, uh, it's the way that, that Kevin Owens conducts himself, that he always comes off like a champion or at the very least he comes off as entertaining. So yeah. no, I, th- I think he'll be okay. People get that, that Owens can lose a match, but he's always capable of winning a big match. Yeah. You know, I, get, I guess they kind of sold that part of him. So, um, But yeah, I don't think he's losing anyway. Uh, in terms of who's uh, the most entertaining, yeah, you Chris Jericho, easily on Raw. Easily the most entertaining. Right in question. What about SmackDown, Matt? Most entertaining person on there at the moment? Styles. Styles. Yeah, I think it's quite safe to say. It's weird that they're both. I'm quite, both I'm quite enjoying, um, like heel styles. The face that runs the place styles. The face yeah. that runs the place. The champ that runs the camp. Yeah, that's it. Um, you know what? What's funny though is that because before, I mean, obviously, Backlash was the first time I've seen any SmackDown stuff since the brand split. So it's one of those things that. Um, like seeing the video packages, Styles is killing it, man. Like he just looks like he's having a fucking ball. Like, yeah, he's having a great old time. Fair play to him. Fair play to him. Uh, I would say, obviously, Enzo and Cass could be quite entertaining, but it seems like they're stuck in a rivalry that no one cares about at the moment. So, that's, yeah, that's what, that's what are they about. having a match at um, Clash of Champions? Uh, let me just double check there. Um... I would so they're not scheduled for one, but I this just it smells like it could be pre-show, so I think it'll probably be made. Nah, that's not good. Uh, Shining stars against them, but they've uh, yeah, Blah, it's that's, not good. That's not, that's not good. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, like even from like big cast, like challenging for the championship a while back, that's like that seemed to really stall their momentum, which you think it would actually help them, but they went straight into a rivalry with Shining Stars and. They're still entertaining, but it's, it's, it doesn't matter as much of what they're doing at the moment. But there we are. Uh, Thomas Oliver asks if we think the Wyatt family would work a lot better in Lucha Underground and if we think CM Punk would ever go to New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, Wyatt family. Um, my answer to this is the characters of the Wyatts, if they were in Lucha Underground... There'd be an environment where, in their universe, they could actually abduct and kill people. Yeah. So, <laughs> the straight answer to that is probably yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, right? Let me let me put it in another perspective, Matt. Um, the WWE version, they never really explored that part of the Whites. We've always said before that Bray Wyatt is all talk and no do. Right? He's, yeah. He's no walk. Right. Um, so they're toothless. In Lucha Underground, their teeth could be razor sharp. That's very true. And in fact, like the one thing I would actually love is um, like the video package that they do for Lucha. Just imagine if they did one for the Wyatts. Mm. Mm. Like that would be nice. Yeah, you can yeah. even think of some of the ri- rivalries that they could have there, and some of the stuff they could do. I mean, obviously, it's a moot point, but. Um... Yeah, Lucha Underground would... Uh, they would not be afraid to fully explore the more murdery and, uh, and uh, abduction side Twisted of the Wyatts. abductee, yeah. yeah. Like, I always thought that, like, the, the... Remember that they would just grab people and just, like, take them backstage. And they were initially trying to get that over, like, oh, God, where, where have they gone now? And they did run with that a little bit. Like, they took Daniel Bryan away. He came back a changed man, right? I think they took back Kane, and then he came back as, like, the masked Kane. But then they just, um, when they started doing it, people were appearing the next week as if nothing had happened. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that started, I was starting to go, ah, come on. Now, now it means nothing, you know? And they were saying on commentary, oh, they just found him, like, dropped off in the car park. I was like, that is so fucking dumb. That is so dumb. But, um, like, in what state? Uh, I don't know. They just, they, just, they just found him. Clearly able to compete because he was wrestling that week, and uh, yeah. yeah, it's just ugh, awful. And now they don't do anything like that. You don't, you don't see Wyatt doing his children routine. Remember what he did with Cena? Mm. Um, Wyatt was a hologram at one point, and now he's, he doesn't do anything like that anymore. And they don't have to get flashy. They just have to make sure that when Wyatt says one thing and then he does something, it matters. But too many yeah. years and too many feuds have gone by. And, yeah, so there we are. Uh, Punk in New Japan Pro Wrestling? Yeah, I mean, if you wanted to. I, I actually... But my opinion on Punk is that I don't think he's wrestled his last wrestling match in his life. 
I don't think he'll wrestle many more. I don't think he'll come back for another WWE run. But because um, I think his stubbornness, Matt, I think that will keep him away from WWE. He can hold a grudge, yeah. you know. Um, you know, if, if we heard anything, if it's true between what's going on with him and Colt Cabana, and it seems that way because they don't seem to be talking to each other, he can hold a grudge. He can, he can honestly hold a serious grudge. Uh, he doesn't let go of things, shall we say? So I think, yeah, uh, maybe. If he gets bored and the UFC doesn't go out for him, I don't see him going on to like a different thing. Oh, I'm going to take up fucking graphical design and start doing that. You know, just don't, you know, I know he was doing some work with comics for a little while. I think he was working with Marvel for, for a bit. Uh, with, yeah, it was like a, I can't remember who it was for. Um, I think it was for Marvel, but I can't remember like in what context. Yeah, what capacity. He certainly wasn't writer, I don't think, or anything like that. I think he was just like, who was involved in some of the creative process. I don't know. But uh, I think that the thing with, uh, with punk is that um, I think that while he's stubborn and, uh, and he equates his dislike of wrestling to like his dislike of WWE is stretched beyond WWE. He d- dislikes wrestling. I think eventually on the wrestling front, he'll cool down and I don't think he'll ever go back to WWE I, there is a small chance, but I think it's more likely he decides, you know what, I'll do one or two more matches here. Big events, get loads of money, you know, and... Yeah, um, like, I think he's, um... I think he's proud, he's too proud to just go, to sort of, like, sell himself for money sort of thing, so... Yeah. And, and I, as we said last week, talking about Punk and his UFC, UFC fight, I'm not fully convinced he'll go back to UFC. I'm, I, I, I know UFC have basically I'm said... I'm not fully convinced they'll let him... No, I don't think they'll let him. But what I think is that I don't think he's going to do the long route of having amateur fights to get to the UFC again. I just don't see him doing it. I just don't yeah. think that's uh, in his makeup. And I don't think it's out of his lack of love for the sport. I just think maybe he sees that he's a 37-year-old man going against 20-year-olds trying to break into the business that are going to be faster yeah. and more hungry than he could ever be because he's already achieved some success. I know he says he's hungry, but to these guys, they don't have the house that CM Punk has. They don't have the wife that CM Punk has. They don't have the name recognition that CM Punk has. Yeah. They are going out to kill people in, in, that, in, in that environment to make their name for themselves. I just don't think you'd be able to... I don't know, but we'll see. We'll see. Um... MC Schwabo asks if we think Clash of Champions can be as good as Backlash, and what match do we think we could have? Uh, do we f- wish we could have seen live, or at very least watched it in real time? So I'm guessing before we were born, or maybe a match we missed live. Let's talk about Clash of Champions. Uh, I don't think it will be. No, I think tonight's show. No, I think that um, you look at Backlash. They were crowning two new champions off the bat, which are really good feel-good stories in Slater and Rhino and Becky Lynch. Yeah. So that aut- automatically makes people, it makes it a memorable show. And then you've got uh, AJ Styles winning the title, which um, was a big deal for him as well. There was a lot of title changes on that show. True. That was a, a big changing point. I well, just, yeah, four titles, three changes. Well, I say changes. We had three uh, new champions. That's, that's a, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, on Raw, I don't think you're going to see any new champions. And by all means, uh, a title changing hands doesn't mean that the show will be bad. It it does make it so my people... I, I, believe me, guys, in a show where a championship doesn't change hands, and there's no big storylines that people are invested in outside of that, nine times out of ten, people will look on the show as if it's quite poor. You know, because cause it's the status quo. Nothing changes. It's just exactly the same. Yeah. We're going along. And it's- especially... Like, if you've got Raw going on at the moment and people are bored of it, which I am, and it continues going on, the path that it's going on in every capacity, then people are going to look at it like this is just more of what we had and it's bad. What's changed? Yeah, what's changed? Nothing new. There's nothing exciting, Matt. Nothing out of the ordinary. It's just them carrying on about their way. And I don't think anyone's losing their championship tonight. So um, that's just my bottom line of it there. Um so let's talk about matches that we would like to have watched live. Um, I think there's a Mania couple. 30, Daniel Bryan's winning. You go Mania 30. That would have been quite special, wouldn't it? Or just to be there for Taker losing his streak as well. That would have been. <sighs> yeah, that is true. That's another reason. 
Just, I mean, it wouldn't be comfortable, but to, to witness the, the, the air go out of the building, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. the atmosphere die um, within just three seconds, you know, it's just, it's, uh, it's quite immense. Um, Punk and Cena at Money in the Bank 2011. I know I talk about that show all the time, oh, but no, it's amazing. Yeah, that was a partisan crowd. They were fucking invested. They were 100%. 110% invested in that match. They, yeah. I would love to have experienced just that atmosphere of everyone, especially not even just the adoration for Punk, but the hate for Cena. You know, that was... You'd very the rarely... was strong. Yeah. Yeah. And the, sh- and the show overly was very good as well. Yeah. On the other hand, Matt, I have spoken to friends of mine that have been in the arena when Rock and Hogan faced off at Mania 18, and they keep, and they always tell me that the atmosphere was unlike anything they've ever experienced. It was eerily awesome, they, they kind of call it. That you can't quite know what it was, but you knew it was something special, you know? And, it, yeah. uh, and the fans could sense it, you know? And there was a special kind of feeling around the arena. So, and I've always been gutted, but you hear them talk about it, like, you, they talk about it such, like, you know, they're so happy that they were there, and I'm like, ah, oh, bollocks, you know, I would love Shut to up. experience it, <laughs> yeah. But alas, that is not how uh, how uh, my life went. I still haven't attended a WrestleMania, so too expensive, unfortunately. But there we are. That's very true. Um, but all good picks, all good picks. Um, the other place, I, I, I guess, part of me just to see the fan reaction. I would have loved to have been in uh, Montreal. Yeah, it's uh, the, the, the screw job. job. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because you you even see um, interviews with the fans after the show had happened, they were fucking livid. They were absolutely enraged. Bret Hart was not the angriest person in that building that night. Most of his fans were just as bad, you know. Um, So, yeah, interest. There's a lot of fan, a lot of um, matches and stuff that I'd love to... Obviously, see... Everyone knows my favorite match is Austin and Bret Hart at Mania 13. That isn't a match I would like love to be in the crowd for though, because I think that is, it's just if you could have just like turned up for that match and left after that match. Yeah. Cause that entire fucking, that pay-per-view was pants without that match. That pay-per-view could probably go down as one of the worst WrestleManias. In fact, in some people's lists, despite that match being as good as it was, it still does go down as that. So um, that's what happens when I think that's the, the event that Sid Vicious was in the main event. Oh, 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 no, no, wasn't it Vicious that. versus Taker? Yeah, I think so. And it sucked, it was bad. The rest of the show was pretty poor. Hmm, was... actually, go on. Um, Mania 25, okay, for the your favorite match, then take. Maybe not 25, but yes, 25. Um, oh, I wasn't 25 then. What? What one? Taker versus Edge. Oh, that's 24. 24. Yeah, 24. That's the, uh, the same one that uh, Michael's ended, well, quotations, yes. ended Ric Flair's career. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that would have been quite I remember, I remember Taker's entrance being fucking mental. On that. That was the, actually, that's the same one that... I don't know if this is the right WrestleMania, but if I remember on his entrance, that's when part of the pyrotechnics went off and it burned part of the crowd. If I'm right. We did it as fair of the week, one of the weeks. So I have to have a look at it. I know in one of his was big elaborate... I know there was one where the pyros burnt him. But that was yeah, Elimination I'd, Chamber. That was Elimination Chamber. No, there was one at WrestleMania where it burnt some people in the crowd. It was really bad. Like one of the... Like, I think one of the, uh, the, the rigs had like snapped and like basically like, fireworks were firing into the crowd and people got burned. Um, so not, not very good at all. No. Um, Axel Diaz then, moving on from that. Axel Diaz says, with the rumours of a women's classic, um, much in the way that Cruiserweight classic... Who would we want in a tournament? Um, he's put some names. Gail Kim. Rumors of that? Apparently so. Um, I guess maybe this is people really happy that the Cruiserweight Classic was on and now sad that it's off and now looking at other things that can happen. But um, solution. Yeah. Uh, Gail Kim, uh, Vader Scott, uh, Mary Dobson, uh, as you know, some of them have made appearances at NXT already. Um, Kaylee Ray, the Scottish girl. I think she's really good. You could put her in there. She's a very good wrestler. Cherry Bomb, unfortunately, is now in TNA. I would love for her to at least have some small 
something to do with um, with WWE because she is good. But Evelise, Evelise, yeah. But I mean, Lucha Underground, don't see it happening. Um, so, I mean, I know Sexy Star's giving up wrestling, but maybe the idea of wrestling in WWE just once. You know, in, in in a tournament, maybe they get a sexy style. Well, yeah, especially if they're going for the similar same to the, the Cruiserweight Classic, where it's a lot of nationalities. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I obviously, I'd like I'd like them to try and get someone to fill the same role that Brian Brian Kendrick did, where you get a woman who comes in and says, "I'm likely don't have a chance if I don't do this, and this really is my last chance to make a name and to really, you know, make a stamp on my career." Actually, be Jet Gale Kim. It could be Gail Someone Kim. who's been been in before, sort of thing. But I think people look at Gail Kim a little bit differently because she's she's been like she's still success doing good work. Yeah, she's still doing good work. I mean, in TNA, but she's still doing good work. There's someone like Victoria Matt who could still go, probably who um, could still achieve that role. I mean, she always came off as like she always played the crazy role in WWE, but. Go with the Brian Kedry thing. Make it go like if I'm ever going to have one last moment of glory, then this has to be it, sort of thing. Yeah. You kind of get that same sort of thing. Um, I don't know if she's interested in in wrestling anymore. I don't think she is, um, but still, um, I, I would say to go and use a lot of the fringe women in NXT, but a lot of them just aren't ready. Um, you, you look at every guy, almost every guy in the CWC could go and perform a good match at the very least anywhere. Yeah, um, and they could fill the better part of 20 minutes pretty decently because there's nothing else in these classic tournaments that, you know, that they did with the CWC. There's nothing, there's, there's, nothing, there's no promos. There's, no, there's, very, there's very little video packages. It's all about the wrestling, yeah. as it should be. Put the likes of, let's say, fucking Tough Enough alumni, Mandy Rose in there. Billy Kay, I know she's a lot better, but she's not good enough, I think, to fill 20 minutes. Liv Morgan... I know she's the one apparently is going to be challenging uh, Asuka in the meantime to the next takeover. Really? They, I just don't. I just don't think they're good enough. I'd have bumped. It. I, I'd have bumped Ember Moon straight up there. I think they're saving her for the takeover event, yeah, and I, I think they're putting sense. putting Liv Morgan as a stopgap until that happens. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I just don't know that, that. There's a lot. There's a long list of women in NXT. Even Alia, who I think is maybe could could quite cut the mold there. Because she seems pretty decent whenever I see her wrestle, but filling the better part of twenty minutes, um, I think they might have to go out house a lot more than they go in house, you know. Which they did for the CWC anyway. I mean, Johnny Gargano and Champa were the only guys that were, you know, working regularly with WWE before that tournament started, anyway. But um, still, we, we, I I don't know. Like, they might have to. Not- Champa's still not signed, though, is he? He, I think he's on like the you know the first deal that Samoa Joe had, where he's basically signed, but they're allowing. So him I know. To um, I don't know. I'm getting the two of them mixed up now. Go on. Champa's the bald one with the beard. Yeah, that's Champa. Yeah. Right. In which case, I'm wrong because Champa's now officially like signed. Oh, it's Gargano then, is it? Um, yeah, I meant so. Yeah, Johnny Gargano, Johnny Wrestling. Yeah. Uh, he got married, actually, I think, this week. So, Have you so seen they did a glorious bomb at his wedding? Yes, and it was wonderful. No, wait, it was glorious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, but there we are. Um, but yeah, it's uh, one of those things that... And it's not me hating on the women uh, or anything along those lines, but maybe there isn't just as a wealth of, of really stellar talent that have never worked in WWE before that they can go out and get, which is a little bit unfortunate. But maybe they can. Who knows? I'd love to be surprised and be, uh, you know, one of the things about the CWC, I got introduced to some guys I already seen before, but a lot of guys I hadn't seen as much before. And, yeah. Um, and, um, you know, you saw, like Jack Gallagher, right? Didn't know, I didn't know a lick of him before, I, which makes me feel bad because he's a British guy, but um, I didn't know, I hadn't seen anything. I didn't even know he existed before the CWC. I'll be quite honest. Now I'm like one of his biggest fans. I'm like, fuck yeah, this guy's awesome. Yeah, I'm like, oh, this guy is. This is brilliant. I want to see more of him. So, you know, that's one thing. Uh, Races fan rocks says that he has a new drinking game. Every time we use a swear word, uh, all of our fans can drink. Uh, the thing about that is that that's we need a, a fan base. Game. Yeah. Uh, that's still alive. You know, I don't want 687, I think cases of alcohol poisoning on my conscience. So, um, yeah, 
Who knows? Maybe, maybe you know what? For our 150th episode, we will make that our drinking game, and we see how far we can get without us both passing out. Because um, that's that could be quite painful. You before me, I guarantee it. I, I'll definitely go before you. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I don't even say it with any shame, mate. I'll probably be done in about an hour. I'll probably just be out of it. Just at, at the 15 minute mark, I'll just start babbling incoherently. Yeah. Actually, so. to be fair, especially if we're going off swearing. Yeah. yeah. That won't so. end well. No, it, won't, it won't end well at all. Uh, <laughs> we should put parental advisory because I know that, uh, let's just say, not all the people that listen to this show are over the age of 16. And we do use a lot of colourful language, shall we say. But still, Adam, I, I'm not going through this fucking show every single week and bleeping every swear word. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. Not doing it. <laughs> Don't have the time. Don't have the time. Adam Marcos says that a lot of people have been giving the Shining Stars a lot of hate, but realistically, in the ring, they're a lot talented than Enzo and Cass, and if WWE would stop with the endless comedy gimmicks, they would be taken more seriously by fans. Uh, I disagree to a point. Um, they obviously are better in the ring. I'm not disagreeing with you, agreeing with you with that. I just think that the, the Shining Stores are unfortunately stuck with the fact that fans aren't stupid and they know that this is gimmick number three or four that they've had. They're not dumb. They know. They've seen these people before. And the problem is, it's one of those things that Enzo and Cass, they're not as good in the ring, but they're a hundred times more entertainment on their day. Yeah. You know, Um on a, sort of bang, on a sort of like bang for your buck, like Enzo and Cass would yeah. be more for it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, obviously, that is down to WWE's fault that they couldn't ace Epico and Primo right off the bat. And I get you. But I think that you go from Epico and Primo's first run, even allowing them to do everything that they want to do, right? So they do everything that they... That WWE doesn't have any involvement in what they do. I still don't think that they have the natural charisma that Enzo and Cass have. They just connect it. It's that new age outlaw sort of appeal that they have that yeah. it just works and i don't think shining stars have that and it, and this is ultimately as much as i hate to say it this is entertainment and you could be a fantastic wrestler but if you're boring you're boring this is the, the bar you know you could be a good wrestler but you can still be boring you still have to find a way for that to be entertaining you know uh, that's what makes guys like – that's the difference between, let's say, a really great in-ring technician, uh, let's say, like an Epico and Primo, and an AJ Styles. Because AJ Styles has honed his craft. Yeah, he could do lots of good technical stuff. He's a great technical wrestler, is AJ Styles. There's a reason why he does springboard forearms, and there's a reason why he does a lot of different flashy moves, and there's a reason he uses high impact and takes a lot of big bumps because that's what the fans want to see, and that's what gets them – gets reactions and you know it's just the the way it is you know that's why Shawn michaels not in my opinion of course but Shawn michaels is looked at a little bit more favorably over the years than let's say bret hart even though bret hart is a better technician than Shawn michaels Shawn michaels was a better performer would you would you agree with that at all i mean yeah i could agree with that um i think i'm kind of a bit biased because i am more a Shawn fan than a brett fan anyway you heathen! Yeah! Don't care. Wash your mouth out with soap. Yeah. Don't Not care. with my Brett. It's Seth Rollins' fault that you feel this way. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, it yeah, that's just the way... I, I do get what you mean, Adam. It's, like, it's frustrating to see these guys, because clearly they have talent. And they can speak, but I just don't think that they... Um, I don't think that they would have worked even if you had given them full reign. I just, I don't see it. I don't see it. There's some guys that you see it and you could look at them and go, yeah, they could be real something down the line. And WWE muck them up with Epo and Co and Primo. It's like, they're good workers, but that's where I see it ending. And maybe the you worst, can see the worst point is like older, older generations would have just referred to them as a solid hand. Yeah, they're just they're, they're good guys to put in a match. It's, That's it. You would build like, a show around them, or no? But it's like difficult. if we need a match, we know that they'll give us a match, and that's about it. Yep. 
Now, I will say WWE assassinated them with this gimmick and with this, the way that they built them up. I mean, the fact that they made their debut and like 10 weeks went by without a single fucking peep from them. Instantly, fans are looking at them like, well, we don't care. And they, they botched them hard at the beginning anyway. Their entire gimmick is a fucking joke. It just doesn't make any sense. They're now, they went from um, wanting to fuck Puerto Rico. They wanted to have sex with Puerto Rico to just being timeshare guys. Yeah. No, neither of them want to make any sense. Right, there we are. Cam Brock says that uh, Final Fantasy and wrestling on the same podcast, he's in heaven. Uh, only until I lose my mind over trying to fucking ace on his fucking gods. <laughs> Yeah. I'm guessing as a fan of Final Fantasy Cam, then you know my pain when it comes to 100%ing some of these games. They, uh, <laughs> they can drive a sane man to the depths of insanity. Uh, he also wants to know what is the match of the year so far, in our opinion, and what do we think is WWE's most missed opportunity, in his opinion, it is Shelton Benjamin or Johnny Mundo slash Morrison. <sighs> I could kind of agree with that, but I think it's a bit difficult to refer to them as a missed opportunity. Like, it's just an unfortunate... Like, it was pretty much down the, um, Bel- the um, Beltamin? Ben- Beltamin? Shelton yeah. Benjamin <laughs> was, like, a surefire thing. Yeah. Until he got injured. Yeah, that was the... Uh, and the thing is with them, I, I think WWE didn't muck around with him when they gave him the, oh, my mum is my, ma- my manager angle. Yeah, he wasn't going anywhere. That was him done. Uh, unfortunately from there um the one i do mainly disagree though is is with morrison and the reason being matt is that i don't think he would have got the edge that he has now if he had if he had stayed with wwe he always seemed a bit too safe in wwe i don't mean in the ring but i mean with his personality and he seemed very formulaic and he seemed like he didn't like I remember watching promos with him, and he just seemed like he couldn't hurt, hurt a fly. Now he comes off like an arrogant prick that could probably kick you in the fucking head if he wants to, you know. Yeah. So um, I think he needed to go to a place like Lucha Underground and um, get that get that edge. That, to um, yeah, I mean, it gives that. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, it gives that edge. It sort of gives him that much better sort of launch pad for such an arrogant character. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like, in, a, in a way, you could kind of relate to him that he's trying to prove them wrong, you know, and he knows yeah. he's that good, and it comes across. Uh, my biggest missed opportunity isn't a single wrestler. It's an angle. And uh, in terms of WWE's missed opportunities, the biggest opportunity they missed uh, was the fact that they could have technically um, have created the greatest year in pro wrestling history, and they failed. And that was the invasion angle. Oh, they what, could the, have, WC, yeah, 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 yeah. That they, the WCW, when they brought them out and they invaded, that yeah. could have been the greatest year in pro wrestling history if it had been done right, easily. And the reason why I say that, I mean, that's pretty big to say, considering all the best years. Ninety-seven. Are you really saying? And I'm sure we've got some fans saying here, Matt. Are you really saying it'd be better than the Monday Night Wars? Uh, the reason I say it is because they had similar things like this happen in Japan, and it was the biggest business that Japan ever had. You know, they had, used to have like, um, you know, used to book these companies going down and merging, and then there'd be a war in the middle. They did great business over there, really great stuff. Mm. Um, and if they would have booked it really well, and let's say they had just coughed up the money to some of these guys that didn't want to come out of contracts and bought out their, co- I know financially it wouldn't wouldn't have been. Um, wouldn't have been wise because they would have been paying out millions just to even get a contract talk with the guy. Right. But the problem with the WCW invasion angle is that you can't head an invasion angle with WCW without Ric Flair, Sting, Goldberg, fucking Hulk Hogan to a certain degree. Yep. Um, the rest of the end. Kevin. Of the yep. Yeah. Scott Hall. Um, you just can't do it. And that, and that invasion angle, guess what? had every every single WCW wrestler apart from the ones that mattered. Yeah. You know, the fact is, yeah, they had Booker T, but Booker T wasn't there yet. He wasn't he wasn't enough to sell an entire invasion on his own. They had DDP, but they clearly had plans to fuck him over pretty quickly, right? Um, they, you knew it wasn't going to go well. I think their first main event was like Booker T against Buff Bagwell. They ain't going to sell. They ain't going to nah. do it. You know? I say they're a legit competition. It's like, yeah, not against Buff Bagwell. 
yeah it, it's just not it's not going to cut the mustard and the way that they treated these wcw guys when they came in they never treated them like proper threats get real no yeah. they never did they're like um, hey look at these guys who just like well i guess we won it's always like <laughs> This is like, they refer to it as the Monday Night Wars, so I'll, do, I'll use the analogy, but it's almost like they were using them as like prisoners of war and just sort of like using them for entertainment. Yeah. They were dragging around the courts of WCW and trying to go, oh, look, look, oh, is it so scary? Oh, oh. The, oh the mighty WCW, look at it. Oh. Yeah. It's and it's like, just a skeleton uh, rattling around in the ring, not being able to do anything by yeah. itself. Um, I'll tell you why. Even more so, you go and look at the invasion. For, so you go for the alliance, sorry, against WWE um, for who controls the company. That was the big end to the invasion angle. And the focus was on Vince McMahon, uh, Stephanie McMahon, Shane McMahon, Steve Austin and Kurt Angle. Yeah, WWE guys. So, there's no WCW there. There's no EC- ECW there. So there you go. I think is that I think if they had booked it right and they had gone with it and really run with it and they've got some of those guys, I'm not saying all of them, but let's say you, you, you've got Sting, Sting and Goldberg. I think those two would have been fine to lead it, right? You get those two guys, you get them on board early, and you go. They, we're, yeah, we're like even Christmas. even if you couldn't get like NWO or something, just a couple of still top guys. Yeah. Guys that had known they had sold tickets for WCW, and they were. They were, they were draws for WCW. Sting, Ric Flair, Goldberg, um, Kevin Nash, when he wasn't running the company and doing creative for himself. But these sort of guys, you know, they were draws for WCW, and they were big names, you know. Yeah. Um, that could have been so much fun, and it ended up being a bit of a wet fart. And it ended yeah. up being all about WWE. So... There we are. Uh, you even look at WWE now when they go back and they talk. You know, you can look at interviews with guys that are going in about they regret the fact that they got so defensive with the WC guys com- coming in, uh, and they didn't give them the you know that things didn't work out that well because they should have known that if this fucking if this invasion angle like because, you know gets some really great traction and everyone's into it and we're going full cylinders and we're just really going for it here then it could have it could have made them all a lot richer every single one of those talent a lot, a lot more richer but nope wwe decided to get um play that whole thing which is they beat wcw and they should get the spoils of their victory the problem is they're still eating on them to this day and it's a little yeah. bit like that's that's already done uh okay so that's all our questions there for this week so if you guys would like to send us any questions you could do so in our comment section or you can send them to our facebook and all those various social media outlets there's plenty of ways and they're all in the description or in the graphics for you there as well all right then uh there's no trivia this week because of the uh the clash of champions predictions and i'm very wary of the show going over time as we've been doing quite a lot recently so no trivia but Matt, the sanctuary negativity is back. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I've had a couple of weeks without the sanctuary negativity. Enough that uh, there's been a lot of new things that can annoy me, right? Uh, as the overall cynic that I have become in my, in my older age and, you know, and wanting kids off my yawn and, and stuff like that. This week on my sanctuary negativity, Matt, is people who cannot spell properly on social media. Okay. Now, I am a spelling Nazi. I'm going to put that out there right now. It gets under my skin when people, let's say on Facebook, I only use Facebook because I normally use Facebook here. When people intentionally spell wrongly on Facebook, when there's a built in spell checker. Matt, if I spell anything wrong on Facebook, there's a nice little line, right? Yeah. It was under my fucking word. And within two clicks, Matt, I can automatically fix it. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of similar to something that really bugs me. Well, go on, well, go on. What, 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 what is it? <laughs> it's kind of social media. It's kind of not. Um, but it's people who can't use or insist on using still, like, text speak. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, 
who are still using GR8. It's like we did that because we only had you know a dozen keys on a f- keypad on a f- mobile phone. Mm. Like you now have a fully working fucking keyboard. Use it. Yeah. Uh, you, like, you know one of the things as well is that in- like, even just like as even as as lazy as using just you, I was like, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Um. On Twitter, I can. I'm not as annoyed on Twitter because I know you have got a character limit, and sometimes you need to get out. But people are now nowadays. Most of the people that I follow on Twitter, they don't like shorten their messages. They just tweet something else to continue it afterwards. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That's how most people do it. I, I just I, I, I don't understand. Like it's it's just it, it gives you it's like it's the red line is right there. You know, it's, a, it's just it's like you should, you've been using computers how long? You should know that. You know that means there's a problem with this. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's. I tell you what even annoys me, Matt. When you get someone that posts and they don't start it with a cap to capital letter, that fucks me right off. Don't like it. It's not the start of a sentence. Yeah. That's the, all that is, Matt. All that is. That's anarchy right there in that small case letter. <laughs> that's the beginning of the end. That's how civilization comes to an end right there. Um. I guarantee you now, unfortunately, it, it's going to be a tons of text talk and fucking no punctuation and just really bad grammar in the uh, in the comment section. So, so they're going to uh, bother you. Yeah, because I know what our fans are like. And to be honest, I, I do shit to annoy with you. You do shit to annoy with me. I do shit to annoy with them. They do it back. It's just kind of how we That's do things it. here. Um, so I kind of bring it upon myself. But... Uh, it really makes my skin crawl, and I honestly like. I I, I don't. I, I never bring up. I don't post. I I know some people that actually will post and actually like, like point the finger at these guys. I, that's kind of what I'm doing here now. It's just a bit more of a passive aggressive way, but I I can't do it to someone because I'm like, okay, I don't like it, but I know it's something wrong with me. I know it's because I've got OCD, and I know it's because like, I just can't stand it because I need things to be nice and neat. But it, yeah, it's. Um, yeah, I can't. Even with you, Matt, I try. I will. I will correct myself in a Facebook message to you if I know I've got it wrong by accident. You know, that's um, kind of telling. Like mine even stems to the fact that like I can't even do it drunk. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you... I proofread. Like I drunk proofread. <laughs> and like I will actually type it, and I'm like, even then, I'm like that's still wrong and I shouldn't care. I shouldn't care anymore, but I'm like, that's, that's, that, that's not right. <laughs> I've got to edit that. So even when all your inhibitions are lowered, you still, that's still in the back of your head. I can't fucking send this. It has to be correct. And spelt wrong. Yeah. Yeah. There you are. Um, so yeah, there you go, guys. That's something that annoys you. And clearly it's something that annoys you too, Matt. So we have issues. We have we, we do have <laughs> deep set issues that uh, we probably need to speak to someone about, but alas, uh that is just the way things go. All right then, uh my raw review. Uh so we're gonna be reviewing Raw SmackDown and giving our um predictions for tonight's pay per view. I will warn people now that I think people can get the, the kind of track. Since the brand split, I've not been a big fan of Raw. And, um, I get that impression. Yeah, it's been one of those things that uh, I go through stages on this podcast, Matt, where sometimes I'm like, I really struggle to get through, just even getting the desire to watch Raw some weeks. And, you know, if I weren't doing a podcast, I probably wouldn't watch it, if I'm honest. Um and then maybe when things get a little bit better, they do like a storyline. I know it may not be amazing, but it will grip me for some reason. And I'll just, I'm like, okay, fair enough. I'll just, I'll force myself. Ah, uh, you got me back. Yeah. I'm in a serious funk with Raw. Uh, one of the worst since the podcast began, I have to admit. It's, um, Well, I, I'm one of those people, Matt. I've said this before. I hate ranting. I really do. I don't enjoy it. And I hate constantly being so fucking like, against the show. I don't like it. It's not why we started the show. We wanted to start up so we could talk about interesting things that happen in the pro wrestling world and, and um, you know, stuff. And yeah, we talk about some bad stuff and how we would like to change it for better. But that wasn't what the show was built upon. It feels like with this Raw review, Matt, every single week, I'm just losing more and more. Um, will. will yeah with it i'm losing hope you know but alas that's what we're here for and i will review this show 
I will precursor in saying this, that I think this is just as bad as last week. And that was even with the cruiserweights in there. Uh, Matt, how would you have started this week's show on Raw? Uh, probably with the cruiserweights, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, that's a pretty good idea. Like the big, you know, the... They advertised, if I remember correctly, they advertised that they're coming. You know, they'll be here this week, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, I know. Building it up, my name. They know they're building up yeah. on Raw. They were telling us the cruiserweights are coming. Cruiserweights are coming. Cruiserweights are coming. The crown of champion. I mean, even even the fin- even the finish of the cruiserweight classic. They were like, "Yep, like this weekend, like you know, you'll see them." Yeah. This sort of like this Monday, you'll see them on Raw. Yeah, better that's watch it. Raw. So it's going to be a big deal. Uh, I would have started off the show with the cruiserweights, just right off the out bet. Like, okay, new era. This is something new right at the gate. Go and get out there. And the reason why I would have done this and not put it at the start of the third hour of the show, which is what they did, is because, Matt, the biggest drop-off, I know some people are going to say, well, that's why they put it there, so people would stay into the show. The biggest drop-off in viewership is in that third hour. As soon as that third hour starts, most people are gone. Yeah. And it's cause they're, that's because they're exhausted. That, putting the cruiserweights there isn't going to help that. The reason why the cruiserweights being at the beginning of the show, especially for their first week, is to get people pumped up. It's to get them so they're like, okay, fucking yes, let's get into Raw this week. Yes, nice. But by the time the cruiserweights even fucking started, I was out of it. I was like, no, 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 done. I'm out of it. Uh, which was a fucking crying shame. You know, they started off the show. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that was even me. I said all of that without actually realizing what they started off the show with. So, what is the worst way to start off your Raw show, Matt? Roman Reigns. I'm going to assume. Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns. He starts off the show. So, instantly, he's booed to all fucking Jesus Christ, just all to hell. And I'm like, this is going to be one of those weeks, isn't it? Where they don't know what they're doing again. And they're just putting shit out there. And I was right. Um, so Foley comes out and just says right at the beginning, I don't understand why the fans boo Roman Reigns. And I'm like, I, I just thought to myself, I was like, mm, I do hope that was written for you. And you're intelligent to know the multiple reasons why the, why the fans boo Roman Reigns. Yeah. Uh, I'd hate if that was actually him. I have not seen a chosen one be so negatively received by the fan base, and that includes John Cena. Oh, dear. You know? It's true. It's not getting better, Matt. It's getting worse. No. You know? I know, like... I guess I'll find out. I know, because he's probably not... Well, I was going to say, he's probably not on Clash of Champions, because he has no purpose, but his face is on the poster, so... Yeah, he's uh, wrestling for the US title. Again. Even though even though he's basically just been... I'm going to go into that a little bit more, actually, why um, him going for the US title doesn't have the same allure as it did right at the beginning, but still. Um, Foley puts Reigns in a match against Owens tonight in a steel cage. So it sounds pretty cool. Interesting. It's a shame that that big match type and stipulation is being used on Raw, not on the pay-per-view, and also in a match that now currently means nothing. Yeah. So, like the famous words of Linkin Park, in the end, it doesn't even matter. So, there we are. Um, have I have I mentioned Matt how I hate promos where guys keep coming in and half the airtime is taken up by entrance music? <gasps> this just sounds like the greatest, the greatest first twenty minutes for you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They were getting me on board early on this one. They really were. Uh, Stephanie comes down. She says oh, the match is going to be non-title and you know and all that lot. Uh, so just then Ron is oh fuck this shit. Rusev is pissy anyway backstage uh, with Foley for making a match against Rollins. That was another match that Foley made. Um, and uh, he's also pissy. Yes, defend his championship against Reigns at Clash of Champions. Uh, this was the only reason this was put in here was so that Lana could hold up the DVD of the movie that she just made with Edge on her shoulder, like it's a fucking infomercial. <sighs> so, and it, it looks, I can instantly tell. I like Edge. I like Lana. I can instantly tell from the cover of this that it looks like every B movie action title that WWE's released in the last 10 years. 
So I say again. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, you can see where Matt it didn't, it didn't start off well with me this week. No. Uh, Rusev versus Rollins. This was a little bit better. A good match until both guys get counted out and end up brawling on the stage. There was a point here where I rolled my eyes, though. So they start brawling on the outside, and Michael Cole, again, is trying his best. Moro Ronaldo trying to build up, build it up as being some epic thing when you know he doesn't have that in his locker. Um, Rollins jumps off the announce table, which is now obviously next to the, the stage, yep. onto Rusev, which is on the floor. Now, instantly you're thinking... Well, that isn't very far. You know, that's a, that's a drop, you know, um, but not that much, you know. It's something a little bit o- over the top, but it's not like, let's say, Shane McMahon fought in 40 feet after getting hit with a fucking kendo stick by Steve Blackman. It's not, you know, Jeff Hardy fought in 40 foot and doing all that sort of shit. It's not anything like it's that. Ha- it's hardly worth the response of Michael Cole looking like he's going to shit himself with excitement over the fact that, oh my God, Rollins jumped from the announce table to the outside. Matt, there's less of a gap. There's, sorry, there's more of a gap um, to the top turnbuckle to the outside. True. So I was a little bit like, I roll my eyes like, come on. Come on. It, was, it was cool, but don't try to make it out to be anything more than it is. You know? But there we are, still. Charlotte and Dana show footage from last week's, uh, I guess, intentional botch now of Bailey and Sasha pinning each other. Foley makes a triple threat match at the pay-per-view instead. Um, so Charlotte pushes Dana on the ground. So, yeah, there we are. Uh, it's a triple threat of who? Uh, Charlotte, so Charlotte Sasha. Sasha, and Bailey. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh. Jericho tells Owens that he's going to make a list and he's going to check it twice for who's been naughty and who's been nice. Foley's on the naughty side, so he's going to list all the things that Foley's done wrong. And I am implying that Jericho and Santo, and that's because he gives gifts to people. Come on, people, m- match up, do the arithmetic. Foley, get, sorry, Jericho, gift, Santa. There you go, done. There's, there's no argument there. There's no, you can't. There's Matt, no you try to think of one, and you can't, can you? I cannot. No, faultless, faultless. Jericho is Santa, and we should all be happy of that. Uh, <laughs> Showman we'll versus Sin Cara. Drink it in, yes. Drink it in. Uh, Strowman versus Sin Cara. So that match that we had with Strowman facing Sin Cara a couple of weeks ago, yeah, they basically just did a rehash. So, yeah. A lot, I've read, Matt, a lot of hate for these squash matches recently. Now, you, people might know here that we were a big fan of a Ryback doing his squash matches back in the day. Yep. I think squash matches still have a point. I still think they're a good tool for building up new talent. But I know the reason why fans are getting against them at the moment. For one, you've got three different talents doing it on the show. So it becomes a little bit boring. Who's the third? You've you got Bo Dallas is getting squash matches now. So, Ugh. yeah. Um, the issue is as well, Matt, what's the one, t- the, the one similarity between Braun Strowman, Nia Jax, and Bo Dallas? They're all heel. Yeah. So, yeah, it makes these guys come off as a monster. But there was something perversely enjoyable about watching a good guy like Ryback mesh these guys and then ask for more people to eat. It doesn't have the same allure with these squash matches. So, um yeah, to be honest, I think it comes off for Strowman now. Now is the point they've got to start doing something proper with him because fans now are starting to turn on him in the wrong way. They're not like turning on him and being like, oh, look at him, he's killing all these people. and Oh, you know, he, he's going too far. They're, they're turning on him going, oh, this is fucking boring. And that's just the way it is. I think Strowman's got some potential. He's still very green, but he's got potential. Um, but you'd hate to ruin it on the fact that they just don't know what to do with him, so just constantly keep throwing guys in but there we are um bailey and sasha versus charlotte and dana in a tag team match this was a meh match at best charlotte kicks bailey in the head for the victory after dana blocked the bailey to belly there's not really much else to say um i'm oh, i'm not going to talk about Rollins speaking to steph it's more of what i've said before why did you replace me i'm going to teach you why you shouldn't replace me and that's basically it Mummy, um, why do you have new favourite? 
<laughs> yeah, why do you have a new... Uh, he's throwing his toys out of the pram. I thought I was your big special boy. I would say, though, it's funny, Solomon wants to put up on his Twitter account that there's undeniable sexual tension between Rollins and, and Stephanie. Would that be a bit of a weird um, story that they went terrible with? terrible way to go. <laughs> that Rollins and Stephanie start an illicit affair just so Rollins can get back at Triple H. <laughs> be different it would be different it would be quite interesting very true still bo dallas versus gary graham now matt the reason why i'm saying his name is because i realized that saying these guys name not saying these guys names is maybe a little bit insulting to these guys i mean this, this is their big shot their big moment so i should treat it like it is yeah so the guy whose name is gary graham uh thank you <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call him the dude in blue because that's it's much easier to remember. Um, okay. <laughs> going back on everything I just said. Uh, he gets beaten up by Dallas, who does his best to look intimidating while chants of let's go jobber ring around the state. At the <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there is that. Uh, by the way, Bo Dallas, even though he's frowning and he's looking, only I can believe in Bo still doesn't intimidate anyone. My child would watch that and laugh. And this is the one that would that's cry. Psychopath. No, no, that's the other one. I'm talking about my big one. Oh. Who would cry if a fly got injured. That's quite true. You know, uh, would not be intimidated by Bo Dallas. So there's that. My, my, my little one should fucking eat Bo Dallas up. Get real. She's you. I'm that's scared of her. I'm scared of her. Jesus. Uh, you know what's even scary about her, Matt, is when she's acting nice for some reason. I don't know. I'm like, what, what the fuck's this all about? What, what, what you got planning? And she's like, oh, love you, daddy. Big colors. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Oh, wait, some, she set something up. There's a bomb. There's some sort of leak. There's something going on here. Why is she just happy? So, yeah. Still, that's, uh, that's just uh, on my side. Oh, Matt. Oh, oh. Cesaro versus Sheamus until the end of time happens and the void consumes us all. It's the final this weekend, isn't it? It is, Matt. You can, I can always feel that you're getting exhausted by this review. Can you imagine me actually watching it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I do feel bad. Yeah. Um, it's not as if these guys are trying to tell us some long story in this series or the matches are particularly different from one another. They're not. Um, Cesaro hits a neutralizer, equals up three apiece, and... Now they'll have the final match of the pay-per-view, which every single person could have predicted. You do not need the Oracle from the Matrix. You do not need a... Uh, you do not need to cross an old woman's lady with silver so she can read the future for you. Um, everyone knew this was coming. So, Matt, you don't even watch the show. And no. you knew it was coming. So, um, that's clairvoyance for you. That must be dark magic that we could predict these things. Yeah. I already assumed it was going to be um, like Seamus will go for the whitewash and then Cesaro will start dragging it back. I'd already called it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's painful. I'll tell you why it's painful. I said, when, when this was first announced, you're going to have a best of seven series. I said, Matt, one, they can't make them wrestle and roar every single week. You just can't do it because people will get, will get out of it. They just won't, they won't enjoy it. And they'll just get bored. What have they done on Raw every single week? Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. Um, they did everything that they could have done to make people just get instantly burnt out of this shit. It's just boring. It's the only way to go about it. And they're wrestling okay matches. It's not as if they're wrestling bad matches. They're okay. But we've seen them time and time and time and time again. Congratulations. You made Seamus just a stale. Uh, sorry, you made Cesaro just a stale as Seamus. There you go. I'll say it. It's Matt, this is the guy that you would have drafted as number one in your draft to head you. I know. Painful. Painful. Tell you what's even more painful. It's not Jericho, because he's awesome, but it's what happens in this promo. So Jericho comes out. He's got a comprehensive list of Mick Foley's shortcomings as Raw, Raw GM. He, Matt, he, here in this promo, he's being entertaining. He's being funny. He was building up his own rivalry, talking a little bit of smack to Sami Zayn. You know, good stuff. Then for some reason, this is what really annoyed me, Matt. I was getting really against this show at this point. For some reason, Matt, 
Because reasons. Because why not? The entire fucking tag team division decides we're going to interrupt Jericho while he's delivering gold. And that's exactly what they do. So they give us the WWE promo of of of, of a one badly booked Raw tag team after another, just coming in, saying one word, then another tag team coming out, then another tag team coming out, then another tag team coming out. Oh, God, fuck me. Why couldn't they just let Jericho do his thing? He was doing all right. Yeah, so you can always look. You can always see the look in his face when he's trying to continue his promo, try and deliver some sort of entertainment to the fans, and yet another raw tag team comes out. He's like, "Why do I even fucking try? <laughs> why do I don't even?" I, I'm bothering for what reason? Yeah, there's no reason. There's no reason. And you know what, man? <laughs> the new day come down, and they say the only reason they came out is because they have nothing better to do. Sounds like a lot of the talent backstage apparently have nothing better to do, so it's interrupting in random segments. Why they couldn't have done this in the Sheamus and Cesaro match, or in the opening segment, or fucking hell, when Gallus and Anderson were drowning a couple of weeks ago with that old day segment, man, I would have taken anyone just deciding, I've got nothing better to do, so I'm coming Do you out. know what? Yeah, I'll just go out, go out yeah. there. Yeah. Um... I, you know, one thing as well, because I'm in an angry state here. When you've got Gallows and Anderson scoffing at the Shining Stars for having a fictional resort, I'm like, guys, that's a bit rich. You were pretending to be doctors le- less than a few weeks ago. Glass houses, you know? Um, Zane comes out and attacks Jericho. That starts up a 10 person tag team match. Uh, between... Yeah. Uh. Yeah, yeah. God, man, this is fucking bad. Um, Jericho, e- Epico, Primo, Gallus, Anderson versus Zane, Enzo, Cass, Big E, Kofi. Right in the middle of the show, this is not the match to get me pumped up of what comes later. Enzo gets the pin after the Air Enzo or Boom Shakalaka, whatever you want to call it. Okay. I don't want to call it Boom Shakalaka, I'm sorry. No, I don't. All right. So that's the first two, two hours of the show. As you can probably hear, Matt, I was not a fan. Right, um, I'm sure some people may have enjoyed some parts of the show, but for someone that's been watching Raw nonstop for the last six weeks, um, it's it's I. This was the last sort of shit that I wanted to see. Those those, those first two hours, I tell you what I wanted to see right at the very beginning was the cruiserweights. Right, that was what I wanted to see right from the get go. Something new, something fresh, something exciting, something that we know definitely works because we just saw it work for ten weeks prior to this one. Yep. So two hours in at the start of the third hour, which is notoriously the hour where the um, the ratings fucking they they lose tank, they just tank. You know, it gets really really bad. Um, that's when they send out the cruiserweights. Now, some people may argue, and like I said at the beginning of the show, they might argue with, well, they're keeping the cruiserweights there to try and keep those guys. You can't do that for week one of the cruiserweights. You have to have yeah. make sure that all eyes are on them. That's but again, point. we need a reason to sort of like, oh, we're going to make sure they'll stick around. It's like, but what about the people who didn't watch the classic, who don't know who these people are? Yeah. I tell you what, Matt, it isn't the people who buy the network that watch the CWC that are getting out of that third hour. It's the general audience that are, that are tuning out in that third hour. People like us, we're watching anyway. We're kind of fucking gluttons for punishment at this point. We are going to watch the entire show. Yeah. The people that are tuning out are the general audience that WWE craves. So you need to make sure that the people who didn't watch the CWC that are right in the show from the very beginning can understand why these cruiserweights are such a big deal before they tune out. By this point, a lot of fans have gone, you know what, I'm had enough, I'm out. Mm-hmm. You know? I don't blame them. Anyway, Rich Swan versus Grand Metallic versus Brian Kendrick versus Cedric Alexander. This was the best match of the night. Um, kind of expected. Yeah. It's uh, Mick Foley, when he's coming out and introdu- introducing these guys, he means to say it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. Yep. But he botches it horrendously, like Titus O'Neil did when he fucking oh, had his ring. So he botches it so bad that it kind of loses all meaning. In fact, he struggled hard with the entire promo. And the reason why he did is because he's been given, Matt, a fucking lengthy soliloquy about how about the cruiserweight division and i'm like how he's got so many lines to remember over the course of this show that you expect him to to remember almost like 
uh, like a fucking essay worth to run down. Of course he's going to forget it. Why not you give him a couple of bullet points? I'm sure Mick Foley, if you leave him to his own devices, he can sell that cruiserweight division just fine. Yeah. Pretty sure he knows by now how to cut a promo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you can tell that they're trying to recapture the sports and the relatable feel to the CWC. They've even got Brian Kendrick um, on a um, entrance, you know, when they're coming down the for their entrance, they do a little video on the side going on about, you know, that this many days ago, they told me I was done. I thought I was done, but now I'm back. You know, really trying to get people behind yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Which is awesome. The problem is with that, is that it's such a jarring change from the rest of the tone of the show. Where it's all about over-the-top personalities and politics and um, bonkers gimmicks. That um, it kind of comes across like they're trying to force this working dynamic in a show that doesn't accommodate it. Um, which I think wasn't as much of a problem this week. I think it will do. If they really want to get that feeling of the Cruiserweight Classic and try and get that into Raw, then they almost have to segregate their show and have the Cruiserweights in that first hour and make it so, okay, after this, then we go to the regular stuff with Raw. Because it was in the middle, Matt. You know, it, it felt yeah. weird to me. But these guys still went out there. They did fantastic. A really good match here. Um, Kendrick taps out Alexander with the captain's hook. He's the number one contender. I think that's probably why they showed the video. Was he the only one who got yeah. a video? No, I th- Grand Metallic got one as well. Okay. I, th- I think most... Um, well, no, Rich Swan didn't get one, although I think that dancing routine he's got is going to die of death. But we'll see. Um, I think Cedric Alexander's got a really good future. I really, really high on that guy. But uh, Kendrick against uh, Perkins for the Cruiserweight title, that's a pretty decent first match to have. That's a clash of champ. That's a clash, isn't it? Yeah, that's happening a clash. You didn't see TJ Perkins throughout, throughout all of this, by the way, which I thought was a bit weird. I thought they were very least having on commentary, but in the end, I'm not going to get on them too much about that because they wanted to have the focus on these four guys and not, you know, they didn't want to split it up too much, which I'm like, okay. You know, I don't have too much of a problem with that because at the end of the day, when you're trying to do the relatable and try and really get people behind these these guys, the more you put out there and having someone on commentary, you know what WWE's like. Then they'll just focus on Perkins too much. Yeah, you know, Perkins will have his time and um, he'll he'll get in there and he'll be okay. So that leads then to the main event, the steel cage match. They tried to they tried to load this final hour. Uh, with what they thought would be the best on the show. And arguably, it is some of the better parts of the show, but it's just people are already burnt out by that point. You know? That's just the way it is. It doesn't matter how good it is. People are still going to be tired. People are still going to want to go about their day and not watch three hours. That's just the way it is. So, Reigns and Owens in the steel cage match. Um, it's, it's, this match is it's good. It's, it's good. So you've got two good wrestlers uh, in this tip. They try and make the most of it. Uh, Reigns wins by escaping the cage just a couple of moments before a- Owens is able to crawl out of the door. So Reigns beats the champion. So you can expect him to get a title shot after whatever happens. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> um, Rusev attacks Reigns afterwards, locks the door shut, which I think instantly, Matt, you're thinking, well, that's fucking stupid considering the person who won the match just climbed over. So yeah. it's not that big of a deal. And guess what? Seth Rollins does. Oh, yeah, he just climbs over. In fact, he jumps off the cage. So that, that was a lot more bonkers than jumping off of the, um, the table earlier on in the night. That, that, that deserved the response, but still. Um, and then Rollins goes in for the same. Even though it's a bit weird that all four guys are in the cage, the door is locked, they're all kind of laid out, and that's just where the show ends. Like Reigns and Rollins escaping, or the other two guys getting out of Dodge, that's just where it ends. So... Yeah, all in all, Matt, this show sucks. Seems it. I mean, I mean, this episode and Raw in general, they do not know how to fill that third hour, and it's killing the show. And what it they did this like, week it feels like a lot of arse from elbows sort of thing. Yeah, the difference like they, what they, they can't. Yeah, go on. No, 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 go on. It's one of those things that usually what they'll do on Raw, and I've caught them out doing this, is that they will try and give you the best two hours at the start of the show and then the third hour is where they fail. Here they did it the other way around. They gave you what everyone wanted to see in the last hour, but then they didn't know what to do for the first two hours. Which arguably is the worst way, the, 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 the worst way to do it. 
You know, it's it's just yeah. not going to, you know, people are going to be tuned out by that point. I think the ratings represent that. So that's the issue that they had here. It's a, it's a miss it. It's an easy miss it, guys. Damn near a uh, avoid at all costs. That's I, I'm, the reason I'm giving it a miss it and not that is because I think that the, me thinking about avoiding it at all costs, which I lowest rating, by the way, is because I think I'm just drained with Raw. And I think that's adding to it. I think it's the shows leading up to this that are getting me in a pissy mood about the show. So uh, maybe to me it's coming off a lot worse than maybe someone that were watching it just on a one chance. Maybe if you watched it, Matt, you wouldn't think it's as bad as I did. But Oh, I don't know. You're not, you're not entirely convinced. That doesn't sound um, promising. No, uh, those two, first two hours were. You're getting. I tell you what, the show finds ways of annoying you. They didn't like. It's like they give you something. That Jericho. That's even the ESPN article caught on this. That it was they. They put Jericho out there. Jericho's fucking killing it. He's doing great. They find a way to fuck it up though. They find a way of messing with it, which is to give you. The, 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 the kind of promo I despise. And it, guys, it's growing. It's getting, they did two of those same sort of promos this week where guys just keep coming out and not saying anything, but, the, but they come out. That's the only thing that they... Oh, God. So, Matt, um, I'm going to let you do your SmackDown review. I need to have a fucking drink of Pepsi because I feel like I'm getting hot and bothered with Raw. And it comes up to this point, Matt, that if I get one more bad Raw... Then one of these weeks, I'm going to do an article instead of reviewing Raw instead. I'm just doing that now because I'm going to need the fucking break because this is killing me. <laughs> now, the last couple of weeks, I've been sending you messages from me watching Raw going, I'm losing my mind. I'm yeah. actually going mental. And I can't, I can't hack that anymore. But go on. What was, Raw, what was SmackDown like? I imagine it was great as always, and I get the short end of the fucking stick. I wouldn't go, go and say it was great. But <laughs> I think I had a better time than you did. Clearly. um i quite like how smackdown are making the the new smackdown women's championship a big deal and that's how we opened it with the contract signing Mm -hmm. uh dave bryan introducing out uh becky lynch followed by alexa bliss they have their nice little um back and forth bliss going on about like how i'm better and all things like that you know, Becky wasn't born to be a champion to which the response is it's so bow bower. It's like, I wasn't born to be a champion. I fought to be a champion. That's a cool line. I like it's that. like, yeah, like huge ovation. Um, but yeah, no, it's good. And then it's all sort of like, you know, whilst Becky, Becky's like, well, I'm preparing a fight. You're preparing for a pageant and all things like that. And it's this great back and forth and it's really good. Um, yeah. Alexa, so, signs the contract throws it in becky's face and upturns the table um and sort of tries to make an escape until sort of becky just barrels after her up the ramp (laughs) and just starts beating her up on the ramp um comes back signs the contract slams it in in, um brian's chest and sort of just like yep fuck it i'm champion whack sort of champ belt in the air no she fucking around, no dicking about, no many people coming out. Everyone sort of like came out, had their say, solid moment, especially just Becky is over, man, with the SmackDown crowd. Yeah, I mean, she was like, doing We well love her. her. We love her. Yeah. I mean, like, she, when you look back on it now, there really wasn't a better, a better pick at all for, some, for someone to lead that women's division, was there? It had to be Becky. It had yeah. to be her. Yeah, solid. It was good. Um, get a backstage segment. The Miz is like, "Oh, why the hell am I defending my contract, my title tonight?" It's like we really go over a contract, and Brian's basically just like, "Oh, you didn't read it? Oh, um, well, it's in your contract now that if you don't defend your title, you can fuck off." Oh. <laughs> Like whatever, like basically, it almost seems like Daniel Bryan's put in a little clause of like, well, if you don't defend your contract, uh, defend your title, your contract's null and void. Um, yeah, because I know, like, I know, on, I know on Twitter they've been firing back at each other over the course of the week. So you know, about, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. re-entering contract negotiations and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, but uh, opening match, American Alpha. Versus Usos. 
Uh, number one Ooh. contenders match plus like a revenge match. Mm-hmm. Obviously. Um, but it turns out Gable's not fully healed. Oh, he came um, back too early. He came up, comes back too early. Um, like he's on the eight, Gable's out on the apron. Jey Uso takes his feet out from beneath him, tweaks the knee, um, and it's basically Gable versus um, not Gable. Um, Jordan versus the Usos for the most part of it. Um, there was a bit where they managed to get a tag in with Gable and he sort of does get some in. Um, but there's just points where Jordan's basically just like, no, you get the fuck out of this ring. Um, he tags tags out. There's even points where like Gable's just sort of like leaning in. It's like, dude, you need to tag me. You need to tag me. And Jordan's just like, no, won't do it. Yeah. Um, but, um, but it's like, it, I guess... <laughs> it's quite good because it gives Jordan that chance to sort of show off that, you know, when he puts up, when he sort of steps it up a notch, he fucking steps it up a notch. Um, mm. And he starts like clearing house with the belly to bellies and things like that. And it's just solid. Um, um, but Jordan gets uh, Jimmy up on the top, up on the um, top turnbuckle, about to go for a belly to belly. They can't like scrapping about it and things like that. Um, not Jimmy, Jay Uso, and Jay just shoves him back. Um, then it's the super kick and the frog splash. Gable breaks the count, but the knee's still not giving in, like, still not holding out. Um, Gable goes down, Jordan eats double super kick, frog splash, and there we go. Uso's your number on our number one contenders. Oh, so they're going to be this facing was, Slater. They're facing Slater and uh, Rhino and no Mercy. Yeah. But as much as I'm like, oh, I'm pissed because I really want like, you know, I want Alpha to be like champions of that lot. I like that they're not, in hindsight, I'm kind of glad that they're not like thrust into it. I get you. Because what's, um, what, what's going on with the Usos, like what this will be is a brilliant redemption story. Mm. Um. Like, the Usos are basically American Alpha are like, we're fucking ready, and then Usos are like, no, you're not. And has, like, specifically sort of gone out of their way to injure Gable. Yeah. And I reckon it's going to be a case that the Usos will defeat... Um, <laughs> I don't... I was going to call it call them by their tag name, but I'm going to stick with Slater and Rhino. Yeah. They have a name. Well, do they actually have a, they have a name now, do they? <laughs> it's Beauty and the Man Beast. <laughs> <laughs> it's Slater and Rhino, but it's like yeah. you know where they come out with like the pet name sort of thing. Yeah. But I reckon it's going to be a case that the Usos are going to beat them, and then it's going to be American Alpha basically coming back for like full on ass kicking redemption, and the belts. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be their big their big moment. Yeah. The one thing I will say about that though, Matt, I mean, you can see the the story as it go along, and you know they they kind of done this before with um, yeah. yeah, yeah. With, with, with down in NXT, so we know it works. One thing I'm worried about though is that like American Alpha haven't been on the main roster for long, but already they've eaten a lot of losses, and they haven't. I know they, I think they, what they're trying really... to do is like trying to save face by the fact that like Jordan put on a hell of a fight as a single man. Yeah, even as Gay, even whilst Gable was like out on the floor, like clutching his knee. Mm. Um, so I think they're <laughs> trying really hard just to sort of like, even though right, you are taking a loss but we're trying to keep you strong sort of thing. Yeah, I get you. It's one of the things I'm just worried about is that like, the overall momentum of like uh, of yeah. the team might, might be tarnished, but we can see how it goes though. I mean, um, Oh, people are still strong for him. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the most important thing. Be. It's not like, like the difference. I say the difference with um, American alpha and like, they say Gallows and Anderson is that the Gallows and Anderson, they made jokes of themselves. Yeah. So like that whole, the, the whole legitimacy of them, like when they started trying to act big and tough and they started winning matches, then it didn't really matter that much. So maybe with like American Alpha, like, you know, they're still all about wrestling. They're all still about winning matches, yeah, you know, yeah. even if they're losing, giving good fights. So, yeah. I kind of feel bad because this is my equivalent of the best of seven. The okay. match that never gives, but will never stop. Okay. <laughs> until the void consumes the silver. Until the void. 
<laughs> and it's really well, bad. Because it. it's... Rather than two current legitimate guys, it's two guys who really need a break. Okay. Cruz and Corbin. Oh, yeah. At it again. Oh, dear. Okay. Um, swaggers on commentary. Mm, don't care. Mm. Uh, but he gets asked, like, who's... Like, he makes this statement, like, he's the toughest guy on the roster. But it's like, you're not. You can't beat him at Jinder Mahal. <laughs> Come on. Mm. <laughs> um, and Cruz lost again. Yeah, another end of days, and yeah. <laughs> you sound you sound very excited for both of these. Uh, both of these man, guys. just, just <laughs> terrible. Like they need that step. They they need that like launch pad or something. They need something, but like them just scrapping with each other and just give and take of wins. It's just not good. Doesn't get him. Uh, it doesn't get either of them anywhere, does it? No. I think I think it's really sad that like when people are asking us when Cruz came in, I was saying back then he's got the potential to be a WWE champion. He's so far away from that now. He's actually gone backwards. Yeah, like he's not. He's NXT. not even an IC picture. No. Like when, coming like in in NXT, he was still being put on specials and he was winning matches every now and then. He was still getting responses. It just seems now that his momentum's completely stalled and he's going nowhere. Yeah. Like definitely. He, um, but I, I don't know. They need something and this isn't it. Yeah. Um, but Corbin and Swagger have a little stare off and that's that Corbin leaves and there we go. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't really give much of a, much of a shit. <laughs> yeah, I could not care. Uh, Miz versus Ziggler for the icy title. Um, it's not a bad match, actually. They got like fifteen minutes or so. We actually got a fair bit of time, mm-hmm. um, but it's a lot of turn and throwing, and Miz is doing a lot of mocking of Daniel Bryan. Yeah, um, like he's throwing out like yes chance, and he goes um, to do like the yes kicks. Oh yeah. Um, can he do them a lot better than Brie Bella did? At uh, least? Yes, because anyone can do them better okay. than Brie Bella. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure yeah. you could do them better than Brie Bella, and you have a busted leg. Yeah, it would hurt me more than my opponent, and I could still do them better. Yeah, That's yeah, it. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, but it's quite a lot of um, sort of to and fro, and it's quite a good. It is quite a close match at some point. There's a lot of like, there's a famous uh, there's a zigzag. Um, there's a lot of everything. Um, Maurice tries to pull the same shit at Backlash, um, but the referee just catches her straight away and she's sent out back. Mm. Um, like at that point, Ziggler takes advantage, but um, that's it. There's, it's a close call. Like he hits the zigzag, Miz kicks out, and there is even. Um, an awesome chant, like this is awesome chant. Uh, Miz attempts to run, um, doesn't let it. Ziggler won't allow it. Um, and as the ref's not turning, Maurice turns out Maurice had dropped the spray can. Oh, and Miz sprays Ziggler in the face. Skull as a good heel, as a good heel, skull crushing yeah. finale done. Yeah. Which is good. It was quite a good, like, it was a good match, and it was definitely, like, a proper fuck you heel win. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, if he's going to be forced to defend his championship, he's going to have to defend it in dodgy means and shit. Yeah, that's it. Ziggler's not going to be the guy that takes his title off and though, is it really? It's not going to happen for him. Um, And it's, I think it's quite interesting, considering at SummerSlam, Ziggler was in the picture for the belt of... The, you know the top belt, mm. and now he's can't he can't win the IC belt. Yeah, he's but, gonna go soon, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. I think it could be. He's probably just around just to put on put on some good matches, and then like they'll call it a day. Yeah. Um, but from the really good match to the absolute dump. Oh, okay. I only say this because it was about three minutes long, as far as I can tell i don't know i zoned out because i couldn't give two fucks <laughs> so randy orton against oh 
Rowan. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I get you. <laughs> Rowan doesn't even get an entrance. <laughs> um, he's just in the ring. Like, Rowan gets his big old slam, and he does a couple of elbows and some drop kicks, but, um, you know, he gets... Um, he catches. He gets Rowan with the um, like his DDT, and then is an RKO, and then that's it. Yeah, it's funny that when you said the names, I can actually like visually, even though I haven't seen the match, I can see it playing out before me. Yeah, you know, that's it. Um, Wyatt cuts a promo in the usual, like you did good, but you don't forget, like you know, I'm a god. Let's not forget this, <laughs> and that's it. It's kind of a bad promo from Wyatt as well. It's just, yeah. this whole thing just was just weak. He tends to, I think sometimes when he doesn't like get his teeth into a rivalry, he tends to repeat himself a lot in some of these promos. Yeah. Um, maybe it's just, uh, maybe it's just like us, like just being a little bit more disillusioned with the character as, as a whole, maybe. Yeah. Um, we got another Kurt Hawkins video package. Still no actual debut of Kurt or re-debut of Kurt Hawkins, just more shitty facts. I thought you I thought you said last week we were getting it this week, his well, debut. I don't I don't know. That's what I thought. That's what <laughs> I thought. But like we're no longer like we've gone from the picture of Kurt Hawkins and the facts in words, and now we're just getting Kurt Hawkins saying the facts. Oh, okay. That's what we're getting. <laughs> You sound so excited for him to come to the roster. Whatever. <laughs> um, from oh, is, we start off with like a really good thing about the women's division, and then we go to something that's really bad about it now. Okay. So Nikki and Naomi versus Carmella and Natalia. Mm-hmm. Makes sense, you know the heels and the faces. Like there's a bit of an issue yeah. between like Nikki and Carmella and all that lot. Um. Mm-hmm. This match doesn't take very long. Um, Nikki goes for this really botched fireman's carry thing. Whatever it was. Um, Natalia counters into a sh- with a sharpshooter attempt. And Carmella's just like, mm, no, grabs Nikki, pulls her out of the sharpshooter, and then just beats the hell out of her on the outside. And ref calls for a DQ. Oh, okay. There. So it makes Carmella come off as a bit dumb, I guess. <laughs> Just like, I don't care about winning the match. I just want to beat up Nikki Bella. <laughs> so, um, it's kind of that. See, she's, been, she's been around AJ Styles too much, but she can't beat up John Cena. So she has to beat up you know, his, her, his other half, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, meh. Bad. Like I said, like from the really, like we start off with like the really good part of the women's division and now it's starting to look a bit weak. Especially considering yeah. it actually looks like Naomi and Natalia is probably going to get sidelined because they currently don't have a story. Yeah, they were just put here because they're facing here when they. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. And Naomi's still a bit over with her entrance. Yeah. Her entrance is awesome. I like her. Yeah. <sighs> so, main event Cena versus Ambrose. Oh, see, is this seen this? Oh no, he wrestled last week as well. Yeah, go. Yeah, yes. Um, obviously, from what happened last week, where Ambrose turned around and Dirty Deed Cena after their win of the tag match, it only makes sense that they will go at it. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> this is a pretty good match. Um, there's a couple of moments where Cena needs to shut up, as always. Yeah, <laughs> as always. Um. Yeah, no, it's quite good. There's a lot of... Um, like, we have a moment where uh, Ambrose goes for Dirty Deeds, but Cena counters into the SDF. Um, but Ambrose rolls... Um, like, Cena he goes into the ring, goes for a crossbody, and then so Cena does his catch. AA. Kick out. Um, Cena goes for another AA. Ambrose reverses into the Dirty Deeds. Kick out. And it's just a lot of just sort of like real sort of slog match from here on out. Um, and it just goes into the test of wheels. Um, Cena goes for another AA. Ambrose counters in for a roll up. Ambrose wins. Oh, he beats uh, beat Cena. He beats Cena with the most devastating move of all history. 
That's the movie needed, Matt. That's the movie That's needed. It. That's the one thing. It's like anyone's like, how do I beat Cena? You, there is one way. Yeah. <laughs> sit. Um, I shall y- sit, young grasshopper. I shall tell you <laughs> the tale of the most ultimate move of ever. There, there is a small question here. Mm-hmm. So, because this match doesn't mean anything, it's just a a tester match towards their triple threat match at No Mercy. Yep. Do you think it's a bit wrong then that you've got both guys kicking out of each other's each other's finishes? Do you think that, or do you think that's, yeah, I do. I would agree with you there, especially considering it's like, well, way to make them look weak. Yeah. Especially as the match was run one with a roll up as well. I'm like, uh, yeah, you know, um, so we've got, so Ambrose is celebrating Cena's like on the outside. AJ comes out, attacks Cena from behind, uh, Mm -hmm. goes into the ring. Um, hits Ambrose, like he ducks the clothesline from Ambrose, hits it with a Pele kick and he's sort of standing there sort of like, you know, being Styles and everyone's going crazy for it. Um, then Brian comes out and announces that while Shane did say that, yes, Ambrose, you will get a one-on-one rematch. You'll have that next week. Mm. Woo. To some people, that's a blockbuster announcement. To me, that's just... Well, we don't have a main event, so... That'll do. Filling up the time, sort of thing. That's yeah. it. Um, AJ's like, what the hell? And he eats a dirty deeds, and Ambrose finishes up strong. And that was hmm. SmackDown. <laughs> so um, I wonder what your rating is. Then. I'm going to say, <laughs> I'm going to go for a watch. Yeah, but I will admit it's a very missable watch. There's nothing yeah, of any, like there's, no, uh, there's no real, it doesn't push anything. Like, it would be worth catching right. probably the, um, like the Miz Ziggler match. That was a good match. Um, but in the terms of anything developing, no, there was nothing. Yeah. So it's one of those ones that you could miss and it wouldn't be that much of a problem. But yeah, there's enough there that if you've got enough It's time, enough there that if you watch, if you had the two hours to watch it, you wouldn't feel... Um, robbed. You yeah. wouldn't feel robbed of your time, no. Not like... Uh, and, and it, uh, Matt, one, one, one most important question here. Were you losing any of your sanity by watching this show? No. No, no okay. I was not. I think we know, we know which show uh, did better this week then. We'll just put that out there. And, yeah. um, you know, that, that's, uh, that's quite easy. Yeah, yeah. All right then. So uh, the last thing on the agenda then for this week, Matt, is our Clash of Champions predictions. Mm. Now, obviously, this is a Raw pay per view. This will be the first time that you've watched a Raw show since the brand mm. split. Now, I have a question well, for you. Lead up tell. to Backlash, mm-hmm. did Raw have like little adverts for it pop up? What do you mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, what like, like um, the corners and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it did. Okay. We're having ads for No Mercy, Matt, already, so... Ugh. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that kind of... That doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make it's sense. Not while they we've got... been getting a lot for, like, that, for like Clash of Champions, and I'm like, but that's a Raw show. Yeah, trying to win the ratings war is the big, like, Mick Foley angle at the moment, and yeah, it seems a bit odd that they would advertise... And they're advertising the other thing, yeah. Yeah, it seems a bit dumb. Um... And then they've got commentary going, oh, yeah, that should be a great event. I'm like, what? <laughs> Surely you'd be going, oh, it's going to be shit, guys. You don't really want to watch it, but, you know. Like, all we get is just, like, um, like a guy on, I think that was, it's, like, because, obviously, the, like, the draping DDT. Mm. Um, and, obviously, it's like, JBL's, like, as a guy on another show would say, that's vintage. Yeah. So it's, like, yeah. barely <laughs> even referencing by name or anything like that, just, you know, there's a guy out there who'd say that. Yeah, yeah, they do. They do the kind of the same on Raw here and there, but um, yeah, it just makes it odd that we'd have. I know why they do it. I know, I, but in terms of storyline, that's what we're getting at. Because I know some guys will be like, "Well, you don't expect them not to promote the show because it's all WWE." Yeah, but it makes it seem a bit they're off. Push it, they're pushing it like, "Why would you watch it when we're the A show?" Yeah, that's yeah, that's what we're getting at there. So, uh, all right, let's get into the predictions there, Matt. So obviously, I don't, I don't expect you to. I know I've been explaining it to you, but I don't expect you to um, be as um, 
accurate as you are in the SmackDown shows, because obviously you watch that show, not Raw. Yeah. Uh, so the pre-show match here that they've got listed is Alicia Fox versus Nia Jax. I think even you can predict where Jax. that one's going. Yeah. Um, I doubt many will watch it. It's on a pre-show, and they've already seen it. So there you are. TJ Perkins versus Brian Kendrick for the Cruiserweight Championship, the first match to uh, on, on the main roster uh, for the Cruiserweight title. Perkins. Yeah, Perkins. I, I, I think, think it would be a serious fuck you if it's sort of like, yay, now you're going to defend it on a proper show. Whee! You're going to lose it. Oh, yeah. I think it would almost be an assassination of Perkins. And the reason why I say that is because this is the, he wasn't on Raw. This yeah. would be the first time that the main roster would see hi, him in action. Um, if that were to be him losing the um, the championship, wow, that would look so bad on him. It really would. Yeah. So I think Kendrick here is going to tap via Neba, not much in the same way that Perkins won title. So that's yeah. how I see it going. Should be a really good match, though. Um, Cesaro versus Sheamus. Oh, my God. Why? Why do I care? Cesaro. A, a, lot of people saying she- a lot of people saying Sheamus, but the thing is, they've said very vaguely that the winner of the series will get a, um, a future championship opportunity. And the very idea, because they're going to go a face against a heel, and I don't think it's going to be for the world title. So the way I look at it is that you're going to have Cesaro against Rusev. The very idea of having Sheamus versus Reigns scares me. So I'm not, I don't want that. I'm going for Cesaro. Yeah. And the thing is, people won't be happy that this is over because it is crowned a winner. They'll be happy it's over because it's fucking over. Yeah. You know, oh God, I'm so ready to, for this to be done. I really am. Rusev versus Reigns. Well, I kind of gave my, my thoughts on that. What do you think? <sighs> Rusev. Yeah, I don't think Rusev beats Reigns, but Reigns ain't walking out with the title, you know? Um, which would be weird, considering if they were to do it, it would be two fuck finishes in two matches with these guys. But um, do you know what the funny thing is, though? Because this US feud, I don't see Reigns going on a US title run because for the majority of this US title feud, he's been flirting with the Universal title all this time anyway. So it, yeah, it's a bit silly. I think Rusev finds a way to retain, maybe even wins and then try and get over this title because been Rusev's sorry, Reigns has been losing a lot of matches since he came back. Um I think this match, Matt, has potential to suck hard. And even though both men are good wrestlers, I think the fans are still bitter from the SummerSlam bollocks. And um I think this could get shot on pretty badly. Fair enough. A match that I think could be a possible stealer of the show, however, is Sami Zayn versus Chris Jericho. Um, I think Sami Zayn gets the win. Um, I think they've run out of both stuff to do, and Jericho's de facto thing, whenever they've run out of stuff for him to do, is to go into putting talent over mode. And I think this is that for Zayn. So, um, but I think it could be a show stealer, Matt. I really do. Yeah, so, which is funny. Could easily be. Could, yeah, it's funny. I think it's a testament to the fact that both men can make gold out of nothing because this is kind of nothing that they've yeah. made out of this. Um, I mean, the storyline of this is, I am angry because you once called my best friend a friend of yours. So, there we are. But I do, I do think it'll be good. Uh, Charlotte versus Banks versus Bailey. I will go with Charlotte to retain. There is, however, the slightest of chances that Banks retains the title. Sorry, not retains. Wins back the title. Yeah, yeah. And then they can continue on the path that they wanted to go on prior to SummerSlam. Because I do think... Banks and Bailey is, is mania. It's, it's it's a lock, I think, in my opinion. I reckon um, they're going to main event the main event the um the pay per view. You reckon? Yeah, but th- I think before they get to that point, Banks is going to beat Charlotte in a singles match for the title. That's how I see it. Yeah, I mean, the pay per view I'm thinking isn't going to be like one of the big four, like one of the double brand ones. Definitely yeah. not. Um, it will be like, one of those other ones. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, there's a good chance um, that next year they, they might have a pay-per-view um, headlined by these guys. But I think they're saving Banks and Bailey for Mania. That's the big match there. They want to capitalize off the NXT success of those women. Um, New Day versus Gallows and Anderson. New Day to retain because there's no point in putting the belts on Gallows and Anderson because they are ruined. Ruined. <laughs> There's no other way to say it, Matt. What do you reckon, anyway? (laughs) 
Um, yeah, it's just new day. <laughs> I reckon. I reckon. I reckon they're going for the um for the longest reign titles. Well, I think they. I think they've already got it. But I. Yeah. I the reason I, I go with New Day is because I think they realise that they mucked up with Gallows and Anderson, and I don't think that they. I think. Well, I'd, I'd like to hope that they realise that putting the belts on them now will achieve nothing. Um, that, that Gallows and Anderson have more deep set rooted issues rather than them just winning championships. Um, and it's going to take time for them to re-educate us and to the fans and to get yeah. back on board with them. So that's why I go in. I'm still pretty sure. I swear, like... Um, oh, didn't... Was it Legion of Doom or something like that? Had a much longer run. Or Road Warriors or something like that. It's where they were in, like, the 400 days or something. Yeah, I, I don't know if they, they... At very least, they're very close to it, you know? Yeah. Um, so even though if you that. search longest title reign it comes up with New Day oh well there you go so I think they already beat it 390 but, well no it's still 396 eh but, but still yeah I still think they're winning anyway uh, Owens versus Rollins then the final match for the championship uh, Owens to retain yep and I think he'll do it by Triple H interference I think that Triple H will interfere stop Rollins from winning and that then reinforces the rivalry that's brewing between Triple H and Rollins. And I think that is a match that's a lot for Mania as well. Um, so, um, yeah, and then Owens will carry on with his championship run. Then Rollins can start going against the authority. He is a face now, Rollins. He is a face. And um, I think that's where it goes. How do, how do you feel? It, how, how do you think this one's going? Uh, Owens. I reckon there's going to be another screw over. Yeah, that's why I went Triple H again, because he hasn't made any appearance since initially screwing out Rollins, so it would be a big shock on the pay- Well, not as much of a shock, but I think they look at it as it would be a big shock, Triple H coming in again. Yeah, they're building up. Yeah. I mean, what they might even do, they might even have it so Triple H comes in and interferes this time, so it removes Rollins from the title picture entirely, and then Stephanie finally comes out and says, actually, I did know what was going on all the time. I just wanted you out of the title picture, and it's yeah. the easiest way to do it. So uh, I'm just minor. curious what their schedule is for the rest, like for pay per views. What well, their schedule, Matt, is to put pay per views all of the fucking time. I swear it's like every second, like because what was it? Backlash September. So I'm just looking at it now. SummerSlam was August 21st. Backlash September 11th. Clash of Champions September 25th. No Mercy October 9th. Hell in a Cell October 30th. Takeover Canada November 19th. Survivor Series November 20th. Jeez. Uh, TLC, December 4th. Roadblock, December 18th. Wait, Jeez, what? Man, this that is, is like every second week. Roadblock, that is ridiculous. December 18th. Royal Rumble, Jan- oh, okay, it doesn't have dates or anything. It just says January, February. Um, this is, this, I mean, they've got to fit 19 pay-per-views into a year now, so now they're going to start. They, we're going to start having them every couple of weeks. That's why we're not doing the pay-per-view reviews for any of the small events anymore, because yeah. it's ridiculous. Uh, right? Hang on, so September 11th. Uh, so that is two weeks, 25th. No Mercy mm-hmm. is two weeks. Uh, Hell in a Cell is, in, is basically the entirety of October, because you've got No Mercy October 9th, and Hell in a Cell October 30th. Yeah. So that's nearly pretty much a whole month. I think Helena's. Yeah, that's Helena's. Weird. Apparently, Helena sells just raw. Is it? That's weird. I guess yeah. they've kind of divvied up the the um... Um, Survivor Series, both of them. Uh, TLC, SmackDown. Uh, TLC is SmackDown. Oh, yeah. TLC is always a good event. Yeah, apparently TLC is just oh. SmackDown. Maybe next year you get it. Yeah, I reckon the Money in the Bank next year will be a dual brand. I think they'll go back to having two matches, one for each, one for each belt. Yeah, that's what I think they'll do. I don't want. I would hate for them to just go. Oh, maybe they won't. Maybe they'll do it. Do you remember of old where it's like, but which belt are you gonna? I know that actually. No, that was for uh, Royal Rumble, wasn't it? Yeah, that was Royal Rumble. Yeah, where you I, could, th- like, I think I think you could jump region- brand if you want to. I think originally they did that with the money in the back briefcase that you could go with whatever you wanted. I'm pretty sure they did. I can't remember. But no one ever did. They always went for the WWE Championship. Yeah. So, um, until they made the, the brand specific. Oh, no. You know, I was mentioning um, Gargano earlier mm-hmm. about, like, has he signed yet? I've just, just flicked through on, like, WWE's yeah. page. Go behind the scenes with NXT Gar- 
superstar Johnny Gargano on the day leading up to his final match with Evolve. Oh, and you were guided you can't go to it, wasn't it? Yeah. I know, right? No. Oh, well. Uh, anyway, Matt, we have to ra- uh, wrap up here so we can get the hell out of here. Um, mm. Been a, a good show. I've enjoyed it. Well, apart from the bit about Raw, but... Oh, you, had anyway. to talk, you had to talk about your favourite show of the week. Yeah, of course. Uh, so tonight is Clash of Champions. We are not doing a uh, pay-per-view review for that. We'll be doing it at the weekend. As usual, we do it at a place over one of our um, segments of that week. It depends yeah. on what we're feeling. Makes the show a bit more dynamic. Uh, so apart from that, we guys ho- well, we hope that you guys enjoyed the show. If you did, subscribe. You can become one of our almost 700 subscribers. You can also send us any um, uh, interact with us mainly on Facebook which is facebook.com slash let's talk wrestling podcast you can send us any Twitter messages to the Twitter handle at talk wrestle pod you can indeed you can send us any audio questions or private messages to let's talk wrestling podcast at gmail.com plenty of ways to get in contact with us and of course as the usual way to do so if you want to leave us any questions that comment section don't fill itself you know come on get typing people let's do this shit you know Get on to it. <laughs> Apart from that, of course. Hope you guys have a great week. Hope you enjoyed the show. And we'll catch you all next time. See you around. Bye-bye now. Bye.